Have you ever seen a goldfish with a human face? I haven't. But uh, today we're going to be talking about our first Studio Ghibli movie. And we're very excited as we talk about 2008's Ponyo. Let's go. Your host, Parker, Dan, and Angela, slice and dice their way through the good. If it bleeds, we can kill it. The bad. You brought the devil! There's a devil inside everyone. And the ugly movies you love. And you can't piss on hospitality! I won't allow it! Hold your favorite films and franchises tight, because they aren't safe. In fact, it's already too late. It's time to dissect that film. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dissect That Film podcast, a podcast that dissects the good, the bad, and the ugly of cinema. I am your host, Brett Parker. Joining me, as always, my wonderful co-host, Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming. I say join me as always, uh, but Dan wasn't here last week, so that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Parker wouldn't let me be here. Nope. I said, get out of here. Kicked him to the curb. And joining us once again is our good friend Paul from the Flicks and Friends podcast. Welcome back, sir. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. We're talking about animation, and we're talking about Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? What is it's it? Ghibli. Is it Ghibli? It's, it's Ghibli. Okay. So I have been saying it right. I said something right, everybody. Mark it down. <laughs> the guy who doesn't know how to talk right, who hosts a podcast, finally did something right. But yeah, the we're talking about he was right. What? Just the one mark. <laughs> Just... Good job. That's for your wife. That's not for us. That's for your wife. <laughs> oh yeah, right. There's not a mark on that board. <laughs> oh, but yeah, there's no one else we could have asked to be on the show than Paul, uh, a man who has so much knowledge of not just animation, but of this studio that is just oozing out of his ears. And I can't wait for him to talk, to literally do my job on our show and tell us all about this wonderful movie. But I'm going to step in front here and talk about some of the people behind the movie first, going through the cast, the director, all of that, some some facts that I looked up, and then I'm going to uh, ask everybody's experience on the movie uh, and then I'm going to let Paul go, you know, buck wild with all of his <laughs> his knowledge. So Ponyo or uh, I'm not I'm not even going to attempt to say the Japanese name, but it's also it was also called Ponyo on the cliff or Ponyo on the cliff by the sea. Mm -hmm. It has multiple titles was released July 19th, 2008 in Japan. And then it was released in 2009 everywhere else. I don't remember. I, I didn't look up the exact date. But I know that it was released later on uh, internationally. It was distributed by Toho, which I think is yep. just a common thing in Japan. Yeah, they do a lot of distribution. Movies. Yeah, especially yeah. animation. Yeah. But I yeah. saw Toho and I was like, you know, you know, you always think, you know, big G. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole I think about. Like, anytime I see Toho, I know Toho's done so much more, but it's like Godzilla. Yeah, I just wanted to see game. Godzilla walking him in the back. Like he didn't even have to be causing destruction, just walking in the background of like any movie that is distributed by Toho. Yeah, well, he doesn't you know, even have to be. Sometimes. He's like, hey guys, there he is. When you realize that Toho's done more drama films than they've done it pretty much anything else, they do a lot of just yeah. standard drama films. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, they're just a distribution company, pretty much. So it's it's like any distribution company here where they're just like our names here. I mean, that's kind of what Disney was for this. Like this, like Disney helped distribute it uh, in the U S and I think in some other territories as well. It's one of the last ones they did, I believe before G kids started doing it again. Um, if I can remember correctly, it's whenever the Lassiter uh, fiasco came to light. Oh, yes, uh, we won't, we won't go into that. Cause he's the one that facilitated the Disney deal. So uh, the distribution deal. Well, I remember looking this movie up because I'm like, I, I know this movie. I've heard of this movie. I've seen clips of this movie. Uh, I watch a YouTube channel called uh, Corridor Crew, and they were going over. It was an animation episode because they do like special effects reacts. And it was a all strictly animation. And they showed the scene from this movie where uh, Ponyo and uh, uh, Sosuke are on the boat and they see the ancient fish. Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was a guy talking about like it was like a uh, 
paleontologists talking about like dinosaurs and stuff in movies. I think that was what I'm what I'm thinking of, not the other thing. Scratch that. But he was talking about like because they're ancient fish. He was mentioning what each what each one was and um, if they were what the characters were saying they were and stuff like that. Don't remember anything he said, but it was a pretty interesting video. <laughs> clearly, I took clearly I took all that information in, soaked it in. So this movie was directed by is it Hey is it Heo Heo Miyazaki. Miyazaki? Yep, Heo Miyazaki. Also written by him. It, uh, we're going to go through the American and the Japanese voice cast for this movie. I watched the American or the English dub for it. I know Paul said he he watched the Japanese uh, version, full version of it. Did you guys watch the English dub of it? Yeah. Okay. So for the Japanese voice acting cast, we have uh, Yuri Nara as Panyo. We have Hiroki Do as uh, Sosuke. I got to keep remembering that's how we say his name. Uh, Tomoko Yamaguchi as Lisa or Risa, as of course they would pronounce it in Japanese. Uh, Suzy Jim, oh boy, Kazu Shiji Shige. Nagashima. Sorry, <laughs> Kazu Shige. Yep, yeah. Sh- Kazu Shige. Nagashima as Kochi. Uh, Yuki Amani as Gran Mamari. Uh, George Takoro. I literally saw that and like read it real fast. So I said George Takai. I was like, George Takai. Same. I didn't, I didn't realize you did this, sir. <laughs> uh, George Takoro as Fujimoto. Uh, Akiko Yano did the voices of the, or the, the noises and voices, I guess, of Panyo's sisters in both versions. Uh, Suzo- uh, Kazuko Yoshiyuki as Toki. Uh, Tomoko Naraoka as Yoshi and Ime. Ureoka as Kamiko. You didn't do that bad. You didn't do that bad. Woo! No, he did pretty decent. Dude, I dude, the, the it, uh, people watched the video version of this while he was doing this. You could just see like the anguish. <laughs> the like, sweat, the, the <laughs> sweat. You can see the veins popping up in my head, like just beating. So, like oh, uh, one bit, one because I don't know how much you looked into their the voice actors, the Japanese voice actors. I I I'm not gonna lie, I didn't look at them at all. To I, be honest, I don't really look. I also didn't have time, so no, it's fine. Please, but there's please tell. There's really not a ton here of note. Most of them are either they are just character actors in Japan, Japanese movies. But the one, only one that's really interesting to me is George Takoro, is the Japanese dub voice of Homer Simpson. Nice. Oh, nice. So, um, I can't remember which lady it was I looked into, but the only thing of note for me is one of them did one of the uh, Kikaider films in 2014, which is another Toku film uh, franchise. But not super familiar with it. I know a little bit, but that's it. Yeah, it's not. Most uh, of them don't have a huge filmography, man. Like it's a, a lot of them are just uh, that, which is not uncommon. So Miyazaki is known for picking a lot of his voice cast and a lot of his voice casts are untraditional. So like in The Wind Rises, the uh, main character uh, is voiced by the director of Evangelion, and just because he's friends with. Um, oh gosh! Um, hold on. Is that the guy who directed the Shin movies? Yeah, is uh, Hideaki Ono. There you go, Hideaki Ono. Yes, so, that guy. So that's the guy. So he does the voice, and he's not a voice actor. He's an he's an animation director, and now uh, you know feature link now, but like or live action. But he uh uh. And he had to be begged like Miyazaki. Like I said, he wrote the character's voice and in his head, his voice was his voice. And uh, so he ended up doing it for him. So like I said, what? go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you finish. Please. I was going to say, yeah, so Mi- Miyazaki just, he, when he has his mindset on something, it's usually an untraditional voice actor or, or somebody that he has heard before and went, that's the guy. Like I, uh, I they don't usually do auditions. Well, so in that, in the, the vein of that, if you will, or like friends doing things, and speaking of the Shin films, uh, Hideaki Anno actually, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he played in all three Shin films. Uh, it's the director of Tetsuo the Iron Man. Okay. He has an acting part in all of them. That's pretty cool. I guess they're buddies. Okay. He's like, dude, we're friends. Let's just do this. You know the right people, I guess. All right. <laughs> it's all who you know. Uh, as for practice. the English voice cast, we have Noah Cyrus as Ponyo. 
Osiris being the sister of Miley Cyrus, daughter of Billy Ray. Uh, well, we have, it's all around, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we have Frankie Jonas as Sosuke. He is a Jonas brother, just not the main part of the main three. Didn't know that until literally I started talking to Paul before we started recording. <laughs> uh, Tina Fey as Lisa. Uh, Matt Damon as Kochi, which I did not know until the end credits. And I said, Matt Damon? Who is Matt yeah, Damon? I, he has like, does not sound him. like him at all. He has like five. I heard him. Right. I was like, oh, it's Matt Damon. Uh, we have Kate Blanchett as Grand Mamare. I love Clay, uh, Kate Blanchett. Oh, yeah. Great. Uh, Liam Neeson as Fujimoto. Floris Leachman as Toki. Oh, God. This character. <laughs> <laughs> Betty White as Yoshi and Lily Tomlin as Komiko. Uh, interesting thing about the English version of the movie is that John Lasseter, uh, one of the founders of Pixar, uh, was the director for for that portion of the movie. And the English dubbing was actually written by, oh, Melissa Matheson, uh, who was the writer of E.T. And oh. she did a couple, she worked with, with Spielberg a lot. Also, this was... Uh, also produced by Frank Marshall and Kathleen Kennedy as well. Like they were producers for the English version of the movie. Uh, Disney was uh, distri- helped distribute this movie. Uh, so it was weird as this is my very first Ghibli movie to see Walt Disney. And I was like, what? wait, what? <laughs> I was very confused. But it was because they were helping distribute it in, in the U.S. Where Ghibli and Toho had like their own thing going on in Japan. Um, this had a budget of 3.4 billion yen, which is not, it's 34 million in the U S yep. and it had a box office of 204.8 million dollars, which uh, I'd say is a, a pretty good success. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This would film. be, the last Ghibli movie to be released on VHS Aww. and the very first Ghibli movie to be released on Blu-ray. Yep. yep. This was rated G. So we're back in the, uh, the old classic Disney era where animated movies could still be rated G. <laughs> I love how animated movies. Now they're just like, we can't go that far down. No, no. <laughs> We got to have some sort of adult joke in there. I remember when Incredibles, things that people just be like, Incredibles 2 came yes. out and they said hell. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> so why do I keep forgetting to? Because they, they curse in Ratatouille. Like, so I was like, oh, yeah, Pixar oh, did yeah. this already. The I do want to mention the music by Joe Hisayashi. Hisaishi. Hisaishi. My favorite Thank music you. composer. He has done a lot of scores for. Uh, Ghibli and Miyazaki, so it's and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the one of the pieces of music, though, which is I guess an inspiration to the uh, uh, from Miyazaki himself, was the fact that like when he was coming up with the inspiration for this story, he just remembered being a kid and um, like doing a lot of drawings, and then when he got older and he was kind of coming up with the influences, he remembers listening to Flight of the Valkyries. Uh, a lot uh, as he was like visiting places that kind of drew influence and all that stuff. And so there's a piece of music in this movie that really has a flight of the Valkyries feel to it. It's not, I was literally listening. I had to turn up the volume to like really hear if that was flight of the Valkyries, but I'm like, no, they, he like, he changes it just enough. So it's not just taking that piece of music and, and throwing it in here. And it's really interesting. And it's always in those like big bombastic scenes, which pretty much is like the middle of the movie when everything just, you know, everything is light and happy, but it's also like, uh, things are happening here. It gets bad things. It gets intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, Paul, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to welcome you guys to dissect that film. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you can <laughs> run um, yeah, I mean, uh, so I don't know what all you want me to talk about because you're going to have to rein me in at some point. But uh, so, yes, Miyazaki is he gets a lot, you know, all the deserved credit for a lot of the work he because he is the brilliance behind us. But I do want to shout out a name or the, so Katsuya. Uh, what's his name? Katsuya Kondo is the lead animation director. This is the first time he ever got 
that he was full animation director on a film. And uh, uh, in the documentary that uh, we had talked about earlier that the, uh, the Japanese news company did, that you can find it on YouTube, uh, they talk, they break it down basically like from top down, they start with Miyazaki and then all how everyone controls, like who's in charge of all the background painting and who's all in charge of animation direction. And just him alone, Katsuyo Kondo, who did a big portion of a lot of the storyboarding and the framework for this film, they broke it down. He did 170,000 individual frames by himself just for this movie. And that's not even the whole film. Dang. So, uh, but he more and interestingly though, so the song that we were, uh, the theme song for the film, the Panyo 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 song, the Japanese lyrics are written by Kondo and he is not a songwriter, but he is noted for writing the lyrics to this, uh, which they talk about a lot in this as well. They also break into, they show Joe Saishi and the breakdown of the score. And it was an 80 piece orchestra that actually wrote the and performed the Ponyo Ponyo catchy song. Damn. So it was uh they don't half ass anything when uh when it comes to nope. it so what's I think is interesting and this is one of the first films I think that Miyazaki did not just for himself. He did it for an audience. Where whereas he's been noted as like every film that he's made he doesn't believe will be a hit. He doesn't believe will be successful. He's making a movie that he wants to see that he, that he believes in. And if it happens to get popular, it does, which, you know, starting really with, uh, I mean, Kiki's delivery service was a huge hit in America. It was probably the first American hit that he had. Uh, and then after that, you know, especially with spirited away, it was, he, you could do no wrong after spirited away. So, uh, this was kind of the first film where they just targeted an audience. They made a kid's movie. Uh, and it's the first time where he specifically made a film for children. And um, I don't know if you got this bit of information. You probably do Parker, but they were going to make a sequel to this movie. Uh, yeah, and then he was told, then he was told he should do a different movie that. Uh, Wind rises. Wind rises. Wind yeah. rises. Uh, yeah. Which, which was supposed to be his last film. Uh, but uh so, but Ponyo 2 got shut down, which is weird to think if, like I said, if you've watched any documentaries about Miyazaki, the fact that he got shut down for anything. But the guy that I can, and I apologize, I don't know his name offhand, but the producer for all the Ghibli films is really close with Miyazaki. And I, that's why he's so trusted is because he's the only guy that can kind of rein Miyazaki in. And uh, because he is a very domineering guy, he's very work driven and expects everyone to work with him to the pace that he works and the amount of hours that he works. It's, it's a, it's a bit intense. He's a very, um, very driven guy and, uh, still believes in to two in 2d animation to this day. Um, which I mean, it's very, very rare, which this is off topic. And I want I meant to ask you guys about this off air, but I, I didn't know this until the other day. Looney Tunes has a fully 2D animation animated movie that is yeah. coming out. It's apparently pretty good. Yeah, dude, yeah. It's, like it's been re being re reviewed well. Yeah, it's been like, I saw a, 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 a secret trailer, I guess, for it. I, I knew nothing about this. What? Yeah. yeah. I think IGN gave it like a nine or yeah. something. Yeah. You didn't tell me about this? It was wild. I was like, what? Well, the funny thing, like I knew it was coming up. I think it aired last year at a film festival. Like, and <laughs> to, to no avail, just because... <laughs> David Zaslav is a dumbass and has been like burying everything that Warner Brothers does. And uh, dude, I, I think he's got he's got to have some blackmail photos of somebody somewhere uh, because there's no reason. Is this Wile E. Coyote movie thing. Yeah, that oh, Wile E. Coyote man. Batgirl, the big Batgirl. He just lost the rights to the NBA. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, like the dude is just like I, he must just have some insight. He must be inside from some other company just destroying discovery warner brothers but anyway yeah so um but yeah secret 2d movie coming out and there's no release date for it but anyway that's i just us talking about 2d made me think of that because it, that's the only 2d animated film outside of ghibli that i can think of other than robot dreams which is this yeah because this was the last straight up 2d animated film that ghibli did right yeah they started mixing cg in yeah. pretty much every film after this um 
even Wind Rises has some CG, and Boy in the Heron definitely does. You can definitely yeah, which is his latest, which is his latest release. Yeah, uh, July 9th. The dude's eighty three. The dude's eighty three years old, and he's still going. Yep, he's like, he, he always now, he's working on another he's, film right now. Yeah, he's that guy who always threatens to retire. I'm this is my last one. This is my last one. How many times has he done it already? Like, he's a couple times, right? Uh, that he said he's retiring. So the he's done one official retirement from feature film, and that was after The Wind Rises. And then he said he was just going to make short film. It was like it was like a uh, he's like, oh, I never said I wasn't going to do short films. And then at the so in the documentary Never Ending Man, at the end of that movie, he has a three year timeline to make his next film, which ended up being the boy and the heron, which ended up taking much longer than that. Um, ended up taking, uh, seven years, I think to make, but he even admits Ooh. at the end of that documentary that he believes so that the documentary is very depressing because you start seeing a lot of the people he's worked with most of his life. He talks about, he's been to way too many funerals lately when they're making the documentary. And, um, they touch on some of those people throughout the movie, but at the end of it, he's like, I've got this three year window where I'm going to make this feature film. And, uh, he goes, I don't intend to be alive to see it end the to be finished, which obviously he did, but, uh, he's just, I, he, mad. he is a very, um, uh, uh, very p uh, pessimistic person. He is a very like uh, fatalistic person, I guess. He just uh, <laughs> sees the end, like, and just kind of embraces it, I guess. Um, not a real jovial guy. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> a very interesting human being, though, um, and very set in nature, which is obvious in all of his films, uh, because he will literally almost every single one of his films he goes out into like he'll travel to other countries and to view nature to get this to absorb some like this idea he has for landscape and stuff like that how's moving castle is a really good example of it he went to switzerland and all that stuff to for uh a lot of those villages you see in how's moving castle so um but yeah i recommend never ending man recommend kingdom of madness and dreams recommend making of anything on youtube that he's ever done uh to get more into the mind of the guy, but the, it, these, these movies are more than just Miyazaki though. They are his brainchild. They are his, in the end, he is the one who steers the ship, but you know, you know unlike like Disney anime movies would take hundreds and hundreds of people. Studio Ghibli films are like 20 people. Like it's not a whole lot of people that animate these movies. So it's not nearly as a big team as you would get in a big Disney production or a big, you know, even now with like CG stuff like Pixar and with just hundreds of people, hundreds of people making these movies. So, but anyway, uh, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just a couple, a uh, couple facts that I remember seeing before we actually jump into the plot of the movie. Uh, this uh, was very much influenced by Hans Christian Andersen's version of the little mermaid. I first read it thinking, Oh, he saw the little mermaid and was like, Oh yeah, I want to make a movie kind of similar in that vein. But no, it was because he read the book as a kid and uh, liked a lot of the elements of it. Uh, maybe not the really dark parts because Hans Christian Andersen is very dark uh, in his version of the little mermaid. He also named he, uh, the like, a lot of the characters in the movie are based on people he knew. So like Sosuke is modeled after his own son. Uh, he actually got the name from a book that he had read before about a boy who lived in a house by on a cliff by the sea called the gate. Um, and yeah, again, this was like the last traditional 2d animated, fully animated movie. They, he literally purposely shut down the CG, uh, section of the studio because he was just hellbent on making sure that this uh, movie was strictly 2d and the last one to be 2d was princess mononoke from 97 uh so yeah so then the rest uh had the elements of cg in it which uh it sucks it really does it really like it sucks that 2d animation has kind of just disappeared um yeah. to to a degree and I i'm glad to see like there are you know, indie artists out there and animators who are keeping it alive to a degree, but I just wish these bigger studios it's, would it's, go back and do something. I wish Disney would go back and be like, you know, we did remember when we did Princess and the Frog after we were doing so a bunch good. of 3D movies. So good. It's so good. 
but it's like, oh, but it's so much more expensive. But it's it not way more time, and it's like, it's, but is it? It's not, not anymore. It, it costs hundreds of million. Uh, Elemental took was two hundred million dollars to make. Mm. Elemental was Inside Out was two hundred million dollars to make. Inside Out two, which it's made its money back. It's over a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. But Elemental lost money. I, yeah, so that's not an excuse anymore. It's just they can put them out quicker. That's the biggest thing is CG animation gets funneled a lot quicker because it's it is a quicker process to do things with computers. But yeah. I it's just it's a shame. It like it like you were saying, Parker. Like, but you got to really go out of the country. Like foreign films, foreign studios are the only ones really making two D animation anymore. Like like I, I I briefly mentioned earlier the movie Robot Dreams that came out last year. Very very good movie. Um. It is a, I want to say Spanish film, but there's little to no dialogue in the film. So it's just an animated film and um, it's really, really good. But I, I think is that the one where the robots like in love with the dog yes, or something. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. It's I've seen it's bits and pieces of that. Yeah. And it's, it is honestly like a lot of shorts was it feels like a lot of segments just put together to make one feature length film. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just it's a dying art, man. And it's just, same thing with stop motion. Like it's uh, you got a few a few people hanging on to it. I'm very excited because when they announced that Henry Selleck is making Ocean at the end of the lane, and stop motions, so it's, uh, it's a Neil Gaiman book. Say he's the same director who did Coraline, oh. which is also a Neil Gaiman book. So very very excited because I love Neil Gaiman and love Henry Selleck, who also most notably did Nightmare Before Christmas. So yes, yes, not Tim Burton. No, Tim Burton's idea, but Tim Burton was his name is just on it because he wrote the poem. Yeah, he was involved, but he sh- we've, we've talked about he, it. Yeah, before. he sh- <laughs> he shows up briefly every now and then while he was filming Batman Returns. So to be just a miserable person uh, from what I've yes. read. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we have a whole episode on Nightmare Before Christmas. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put the little note over there in the corner. Go click on it. Watch that episode. Um. Yeah, I love. I mean, it, two of my favorite forms of animation, two D and stop motion. Yeah, the fact that like Leica is still keeping the stop motion alive. There is, and and even like people who are doing like stop motion in like the horror genre. Like there was that new stop motion movie. I need to check that out. Yep. Uh, I I've been really interested to check that out because it's like anything stop motion. I'm oh man, sign me up. Two D animation, sign me up. Three D, you know, I I'll enjoy. Like I loved Inside Out too. Uh, I enjoy those movies. One of my favorite Disney movies is Moana. That's a 3D animated movie. Like, they're great movies. If you can write a good story, it really, I guess, doesn't really matter. Um, But when you're focusing too much on, like, oh, how pretty and how detailed does this look, but you give me kind of a mediocre story, then I'm just going to, I'm going to judge it. I'm going to judge it a lot harder. It's fair. All right. I think uh, our next step is to go around the room and talk about everyone's history with this movie. And I'm just going to start because I've never seen this movie before. So, uh, Angela, you picked this movie. For our, what is it called now, Angela? What's this month called? Oh, I, I said Waterworks. Water <laughs> Waterworks month. We're going with it. I don't care. Not uh, to be with the upcoming <laughs> waterboarding month. <laughs> Angela, what's your history with this movie? Uh, we first watched this when our oldest was, what, like three? Three or four in that range. And it, that's been 12 years, about 12 years ago. And we seriously watched this movie over and over and over and over again to the point where I can still quote some of it because he was so obsessed with it. And he called it uh, he called it the fishy movie for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Then he started calling it Ponyo. And I it it's almost like we never stopped watching it. <laughs> I could remember a chunk of it. I mean, it's, it has been a minute. Like he stopped. Like we had that streak of all the time, and it was something else, and we just never kind of came back to it. <laughs> but it, I mean, it's still worth the watch. So, so, so here's my thought on this movie. <laughs> this is what I. This is no, no, no. Hold on. And you're, you're not supposed to tell what you think about this it. Is this is not my this think is your of history. It. This not is my, my <laughs> head cannon. head cannon. So this is how the board meeting went. Somebody's like, listen. I got this little mermaid book and I kind of want to do a story like that, but for kids, except I wanted to in- integrate elements of uh, environmentalism, body horror, and that one movie with Liam Neeson. What was it? Taken? Taken. I was like, are you serious? No, in, in, in the English dub, I want Liam Neeson in it. And then that's just how the movie happened. 
in my I don't mind. Think Take It came out till a couple of years after this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because think <laughs> I am a huge fan of there is an old anime spoof compilation franchise or series on the internet called AMV Hell. Love those things to death. I don't know if any who those of you who have heard of it. Yes. They're doing an eighth one after like a decade. And there was an old one where they mixed Ponyo with the whole like I will find you and I will kill you bit with Liam Neeson. And I was like, dude, that's the movie. Like this is the whole movie in my mind now. But yes, what what my wife said about the movie, it's it's exactly what she said. Like we just watched this a butt ton with Victor when he was little. And I don't he didn't really watch it with us. We watched it again, did he today? Mm-mm. It was just Sarah's he, he wasn't here. Well, he or came no, out he came, for a little bit. Yeah, like, but oh, he was down here. I'm 15. Play. I'm too good for this. Like, yeah, yeah. sure. Just hit the bricks. Don't worry, the my 12-year-old is the same. Way, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, anyway, that was, that's about it. Um, All right, Paul. So uh, my son did sit down and watch it with me. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, my, my daughter wanted to, but I was like, I'm watching the Japanese version, baby. I'm sorry. And she can't keep up with the subtitles. Uh, I was before I dive into my thing. I, I was curious as now I know why, but I was like, I was, I wonder, I was like, I wonder why this is the first Ghibli movie that they are choosing to do. Cause this would not be what I would think a lot of people would dive into like as their first Ghibli movie to do a, uh, which I mean, I guess we did Mononoke, which is not what I would think would be traditional either. I think oh, Dustin loved that one. That was the first one I'd ever watched. That's was... the first one I'd ever seen. Was Mononoke. Yes. Uh, same here. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, you know, traditionally, I think most people either think of Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, or, Stu- or Spirited Away. Those are like the three really big ones. Um, but yeah, th- uh, this one is really, really good. So uh, my history of this, I saw this in theater. So um, yeah, uh, me and literally one other, my buddy, two grown ass men in the middle of a day, in the middle of the week, the only people there. There was only one theater in our area I even showed it, and it had like two showings a day when it came out. So heck yeah, dude. Those are the best ones. Nobody. Oh, it was perfect, dude. It was perfect. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen, I think, every Ghibli film in theater since that. Well, except I didn't see Wind Rises because it only had a very limited showing. And, um, but yeah, so my history with this, like I said, I saw in theater, bought it the day it came out on DVD. Um, and then we went through a phase where I was sh- uh, showing all the Ghibli films to my kids. And well, the ones that I thought they'd be interested in, I'm not showing them. They don't care about Porco Rosso or Pom Poco, stuff like that. But I showed them this Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, Cat Return, stuff like that. And my, this was the one that my daughter latched on to, which uh, I've, y'all have already seen the product of that. I've spent way too much money on this so she could have this little plushie. Uh, but now she's obsessed with all of them. She wa- Spirited Away is probably her favorite now, but she loves Ki- She used to have a Kiki's Delivery Service dress, the dress that she had. Like she had that dress, used to wear it all the time. So, but the, uh, Ponya was the gateway for her. So, like that, I think Ponya was like what really, really opened her up to anime. And now she's a huge weeb. So, uh, but I, way to go, dude. They can make another one I, of us. Well, I, I will say, I will say <laughs> this, and I've tried to tell Dustin this uh, numerous times is yes, Ghibli is anime. But Ghibli isn't anime. Like, I, I don't know how to re- convey it like to because the quality of the film making is something completely different than what you would get in traditional shonen anime and stocks of which, you know, Miyazaki hates, by the way. <laughs> like uh, it, it but it to, like I try to tell him, I said, it's just Japanese Disney films. Like they try to tell these really elaborate stories that appeal to everyone with fantastic animation and um, especially Miyazaki's films, they're way more fantastical. Whereas if you get into more of Takahata stuff with Ghibli, it can get a little more dry, darker. If you've ever seen Grave of Fireflies, no. uh, beautiful film. It is on my short list of one of the when you talk about like what's a film you'll watch once and never watch ever again. That's on my list. I will never watch it ever again just because it. it if you don't well up by the end of that film you will have no soul that movie like i it punched me right in the gonads at the end of that film like it's i can say that right <laughs> uh 
Pretty sure I, this I one just, already slipped up. So. No, I don't. I think I'm uh, good. Dan's, Dan's been good. Yeah, that? Paul's the one that's good. Oh. He's. I've been keeping track of Paul. Oh, uh, dude, I just. If I, I apologize, if I said it, it's just second nature to me. I do. I. I, I speak like. Oh, no, uh, I understand. Uh, uh, I have no filter around my kids, so I guess I. I, I, just, I am the same way. Don't. Uh, don't yeah. I, apolo- no I apologize. Either. I apologize. But uh, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So but yeah. So like. Don't ask. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, Takahata's <laughs> films are a little more like he did the My Neighbor Yamada's Princess Kaguya. Um, his are like whereas like Miyazaki's films are whimsical, with the exception for Wind Rises. Like they have this air of fantasy and stuff about them. And you are right about the environmental thing. He uh, is a big environmentalist, and almost all of his films are have that element to him, which obviously Mononoke is that's what it's all about. And um but yeah, so I don't know how I got to where I was going and I apologize. I don't, I got off on the whole gonads to tangent and it really threw me off. Can I, can I, can I cap your conversation? With yeah, something? absolutely. Please cap it. I want to, posi- po- uh, I want to petition Miyazaki to make a Ghibli version of Captain Planet. Oh dude, that'd be great. Okay. Wouldn't it be? It'd be <laughs> freaking awesome. But anyway, uh, and I disagree with your comment about anime because yes, most people know Shonen stuff, but there's a lot of stuff outside That's of what that. We're talking about. And in fairness, that it's not fair to rope with, and I don't think quality of 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 how it's filmed has anything to do with it because that's like saying just because a slasher is big budget doesn't make it a oh, slasher no, 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 film. No, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Dustin doesn't know nothing about nothing, so. But- uh, <laughs> but I think it's like, it, it, and it's also a stylistic thing too, right? Because Ghibli has a yeah. very distinct look, like yeah. like Disney has a very distinct look. Like there is a style to Ghibli films, and yeah, absolutely. which by the way, Katsuyo Kondo is kind of credited for that because he is a uh, a design. He does all art design, and like he's the one that does the character models and the character designs for Miyazaki's films, and so he's the one that kind of coined this uh, look uh for yeah. late, especially like the late 90s and on but um that's to me they're just like it's there are they're, yeah they, i didn't mean to because evangelion is a beautiful beautifully drawn series and film like there are really well made like uh, anime like outside of ghibli non show yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, like, and but th- like to me like ghibli is kind of it just it feels different like it yeah. it does yeah, yeah i agree but, uh but yes it is still technically anime but it's like when i say and i actually when i talk about anime i'm talking about other stuff and then their studio gym. Yeah, like i usually don't put those together i like both but to me they're they're separate that's fair all right full stop well <laughs> if we're all ready to go we ready to hop into the plot of ponyo What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Flicks and Friends podcast. I'm Dustin. I'm Paul. And I'm Sean. Join us each week as we sift through movies and discuss a variety of theme months and determine whether they're blockbusters or blockbusted. Previous themes include Animation Month, 80s Horror, and under 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, just to name a few. We have weekly guests, fan favorites, and new guests happen all the time over here. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. But until next time... I'm still Dustin. And I'm still Paul. And I'm Sean. And this is the Flicks and Friends Podcast. Ready to yeah. dive into it? Yeah. Whoa! Oh! This is the water you see. Yeah! <laughs> All right, here we go. It's time to dissect, dissect, dissect that. 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 Boom. Let the man drink! <laughs> Wait, abort. This movie opens to just beautiful sea life, like just a bunch of fish, just everything swimming around. You get this beautiful, the beautiful score playing. And uh, you then zoom in and you go, what the heck is going on over there? It's like this orb over a, 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 Looks like a submarine with fins. What the heck is going on over there? It's some weird lanky man feeding the wildlife with the uh, turkey baster. It's getting weird already, guys. 
Um, and uh, right, Mr. Octopus, you like the marmalade. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out real quick before we go too far past this. This is a common theme in Miyazaki films: is vehicles being alive or having like mm. so you know, obviously it starts with cat bus and so on but this is uh house mm. moving castle like these vehicles that are living to a sense it's like yeah he did bus. horses one time too <laughs> he said cat, cat bus, bus and all i could say all is like cat bus cat, cat bus, bus. Cat bus. Yes, world of a little you. cat bus <laughs> <laughs> I actually, before we go on this, I lied, Paul. Princess Mononoke was not my first Ghibli <gasps> film. Because I'm pretty sure he did Little Nemo. Uh, Yes, I believe so. But that's pre-Ghibli. So, like, he did a bunch of yeah, stuff pre-Ghibli. Yeah, which, you know, because he, he... Technically, that was my first of his okay, films. Because I played Nemo the Dream Master on the on an NES. That's and he did why. Heidi, and he did a lot of stuff. Like, uh, I think he did Kimba. I think he worked on Kimba. Uh, but he did a... Oh, a bunch of stuff. <laughs> How dare you, Lion <laughs> King? You know about him. <laughs> Which he didn't. Oh, st- I mean, God. that's totally been debunked. Like, he, uh, it, it, Lion King did not. It's nothing like Kimba the White Lion. But uh, oh, oh, I've seen a bunch of conspiracy videos oh. where they literally line things up. You're like, oh, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's easy. Like, to, that's what people realize. That, that was a TV show. Like, th- there was hundreds of hours of animation that they chopped and pulled that stuff from. So, not hundreds, no. but you get what I'm saying. It's going to live on forever. So as this man is giving his uh, turkey baster meal to the wildlife, he spots a beautiful giant squid go by. And he's like, oh, I'd like to touch. I want to touch you. Yeah, the, the, the squid like flashes his high beams at him and he flashes like, back. Hey. There's no cops. Like, you know, get out of here. I'm over here. So we then we then see our titular character. I can park here. Go. We then meet our titular character, Ponyo, as she comes out with all of her little goldfish. I guess she's a goldfish siblings as they come out and she's significantly bigger than the rest of them. And then when you see her later, she's very small. So I was like, dang, dang, how small are her siblings compared to her to the humans? They must be like like minnows, like little minnows. Yeah. And uh, she's trying to get them back into the boat or the t- submarine or whatever the heck this vehicle is. Go! And she's trying to like push him back in because he's like, he's like, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? And then <laughs> she, after she does that, she kisses them and just goes, peace. And just There's- hops on the back of a jellyfish and is like, bye. <laughs> just, it's literally like a ship from Star Wars. She just lays down and the thing goes over. <laughs> that sucks. I'm not going to bed at seven o'clock anymore. I'm going to Miami. Deuces <laughs> ends up in Japan. Ponyo you can't say it, but I'm gonna say it. You can't. I don't say it. The oh. Seaman Sisters. Meet Ponyo yep. Jetson. <laughs> Her dad Fushimoto. <laughs> so we then get the beautiful okay. opening credits. Uh, they're great. Also, but the only thing I have to say, and yes, it's, this is going to be a little, this is going to go from G to PG, is the fact that they show the siblings and they look like little, they look like little dicks. I'm sorry. They, I said they, they're semen sisters. I believe the term is shuttlecock, folks. This is badminton. <laughs> Call it a birdie. You just see one just getting just batted back and forth. Oh by my like a, God. I like great. dolphins or something. I don't know. Dolphin. <laughs> But I, it's all I could think of. I'm like, why? Why? This is a kid's movie, man. Stop thinking of that. But Disney used to do that uh, stuff all the time. Later, so. they talk about licking things, and I'm like, Very true. Right? The Very only true. thing people do with their mouth in this movie. I wanted to ask you guys, because you guys rewatched the English version this time, and it's it's mm-hmm. been about a year since I've watched the English version. And it's something I noticed in the Japanese version. So when he talks about his parents, he calls them mother and father, right? Mom and dad. Yeah, so, but in the Japanese version, he calls them. Yeah, Lisa. Lady, yeah, right? Lisa and Koichi. Yeah, so I, I was like, I've realized that's like, which is weird to me because Japanese are very traditional, and so like, yeah, to call yeah. them by their names is is weird because usually it goes by last name, right? Right. Like, well, even uh, then, he wouldn't yeah. call his mother and father by their names. Period. Like, right. you know, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nothing. I don't even know. Do they even say the dad's name Koichi. in the English version? Yes. Yeah, do. but I don't even know if they I, do. Do uh-huh. they? She uh, because when he's on the boat, he's like, she's real mad at you, Koichi, or whatever. Like, yeah. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it was it was the guy that was yeah. on the ship with him. Yeah. So 
Ponyo gets off the jellyfish uh, express vehicle. Yeah, the jellyfish express. Perfect. <laughs> and <laughs> she's floating around, but then a trawler comes through, and you could. And this is just showing uh, that this area is just littered with trash. There's just trash everywhere, and she gets caught in trawler. She escapes, but she gets stuck in a jar, and she floats up to the shore where a little five-year-old uh, Sosuke, yes, I want to iterate, this kid is five years old. Five. 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 And this boy does more than most teenagers, most adults. Okay, this kid is five. Uh, yep. He finds the jar, finds her, he tries to get her out has a tough time doing it but he finally gets her out and then he's like oh a goldfish and i went a oh, what that's not a goldfish what what do you mean he is five what kind of goldfish he is five. what kind of goldfish do you guys have yeah but even Koi, normally, even his I mom guess. say that it's a gold hey. like oh i like your goldfish and it's like <laughs> it's like what kind of goldfish you got in japan man it's kind of terrifying <laughs> They got human what? faces, bro. Koi still don't have human faces. Don't eat the goldfish. But the one of my favorite parts about this whole thing is the fact that we get the the waves that crash onto the shore, but they have faces and they're actually like creatures. They like literally follow Sosuke up the up the hill, and I love they popped up. They got little eyes as they're going up, and they're making like like roaring noises as they go up. Oh, it says moaning. I wish Frank the- Walker voice these. Oh, I really do. This is a Frank Walker job. A, right absolutely. Here. And uh, you find out that the wizard man is Ponyo's father. He's not very happy with the situation. I'm like, wait a second. Mm. I want to know how this all works, but I don't want to go too deep. Magic. Into it we're try to be as <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actual magic. magic. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what this fun. movie is about. So. It's like um, shit happens. It's magic. Don't worry about it. But he's very upset that a human has captured her, and so he sends his wave creatures uh, to go go after her. Uh, so Sosuke's got to leave with his mom because he's got to go to school. She's got to go to work. I guess the school and her job are literally next door to each other. Well, it's a small island. And, like I think it's a small right, island. Yeah, right. Said. And she is an insane driver. Absolute, like she is fast and the furious thing. This this thing, all nah, over dude. the place. She's doing <laughs> okay, baby. She's got that downhill drift. Like, <laughs> like, oh, I don't think this car would do that. I'm pretty sure it'd be front wheel drive. <laughs> the but hilarious thing is, gas, she gas, does not. Gas, she doesn't gas, flinch. Gas. This woman doesn't flinch the entire movie. No. with anything. Dan I'll is, tell you one thing. Dan is failing so hard right now with the last. Oh, I did. I did. Seconds. I did. I got excited. I wasn't paying attention. Just censoring. <laughs> yeah. <kind> of- no. <laughs> so I got excited. No, every time he that. curses, you should. Uh, I, the, you'll, this is a lot of work. Just, uh, just dub over the ham over every time he cusses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that would rock, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much work <laughs> <laughs> but yeah she doesn't blink an eye for anything that happens throughout this entire movie she is she is just stoic she is like I don't care I, I have clearly she has fought battles <laughs> before she's this she's kind of got to be right given the situation that she's in where the yeah. dad being yeah absolutely but it's like she's like narrowly avoiding like a ship that's being brought into a dry dock like like the thing is going in, they're just like, "Hey, Lisa, have a good day." As she's like she this close to being clipped by the she ship, she goes around the barriers, <laughs> and they're just like, "Ah, it's just Lisa. She's crazy." That's somebody who's been told by their boss, "If you're late one more time, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. it." But before <laughs> before they leave, though, uh, the wizard man comes to it's shore, a- and he's got. <laughs> I'm just gonna call Mr. him wizard, wizard man. man. <laughs> Mr. Doctor Wizard, Wizard Man, Man, Fuji, Fuji Moto. If we he want didn't to go be. for an extra four years to be called Mister, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doctor <dude>. Wizard. <laughs> uh, gosh wizard. dang it! I just thought of um, Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, Mister Warlock, if you please, oh. <laughs> Winter Warlock. Oh, right, 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 right. That's the, he loses his power. Just call yeah, him Winter. The water. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Water <laughs> Warlock. <laughs> It is. It is. This is the job, dude. It's like, but I love where he's like got he's like. Oh, go ahead. He's got his little device there that you would kind of use for like weed killer, which is what she thinks he's doing, and he's like, chemicals. 
absolutely not. This is this is the freshness of seawater so that I don't dry up on land. And she's just like, all right, weirdo, can I got to go? No. <laughs> I love the facial expressions they give him for everything that he's doing. It's just like, because his face is so elongated. It's just like a shocked face or just like, oh, <laughs> he's not a very good wizard, by so the way. So it's really cool because I love hearing, like, like I said, it's been a minute since I've seen the English version. So it is refreshing to hear like the stuff that you're saying as far as what the English dialogue was, is almost exactly what the actual Japanese dialogue is, which, you know, can be difficult when you're doing lip sync with dubs and stuff like that. So right. it's impressive that they exactly. put all this much work into getting it as close as possible. The only difference is he said is because he has to keep the sea humidity on him. But other than that, it's like, it's exactly the same far as like the, the toxins or the the spray she's like you can't spray here and all this stuff yeah so sosuke names his little new his his new little fish friend ponyo and he finds out that she likes ham Damn. i was like oh she's just a carnivore no she just loves ham she Damn, literally tears into that thing good stuff so while they're driving to where they gotta go uh, Doctor Wizard, there he is following close behind on his little contraption, uh, submarine thing, and uh, she works at an old folks' home, so she's got to get there because uh, you know they could be grumpy and they need a lot of attention. Well, actually, there's only one grumpy one. Uh, he gets to school, he sneaks out, and he's got to hide Ponyo, so he hides hides her in a bush. I like how he's like, Are there any cats around? Yep, yep. He puts a he puts like a, a piece of the bush on top of the uh You're the clearly tail. not on that cat island. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he goes to school. He then um brings his or he he you meet his friend Kamiko, right? His friend. Yeah. She's kind of a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah. Forget her new dress, dude. Yeah, My mom made it. She, she, she just gets sprayed with she just gets sprayed with water. Like, why is she getting all bent out of shape? It's not like the guy like juice spilled on her or something. Like, it's just it's water. just it'll dry. Yeah, that it'll, shit will buff out. I mean, that yeah. stuff will buff right. out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> buff out. But, but the but the first <laughs> thing is is when when Sosuke goes over to the pail, he thinks it. He thinks that Ponyo's dead, and this happens like three or four times throughout the movie where he's just like, "Don't die." Like, you're not Dude, dead. Something. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's of she course like a nap. Her indication of being alive is squirting him, and he he's fine with it. But yeah, uh, Kamiko not a big fan. So she well, Kamiko call, says she's ugly. Yeah, you know, what the hell? I, I mean, listen. Rude. I mean, listen. If somebody came up to me with with uh, a Ponyo like creature and said, "Hey, you like my goldfish?" I would have been like, "What?" <laughs> Gold? He said, what, what, "What reactor did you it, pull that it's out?" It's the snack that smiles back. Snack that smiles back. Goldfish. Exactly. Dude, I want Ponyo goldfish. They, 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 you eat them and they're ham flavored. <laughs> so confused. Oh, oh, no. so a snack with a human face that tastes like ham that's supposed to taste like cheese. I'm just all thrown up. Hey, <laughs> allegedly people taste like pork. <sighs> so I don't know if it's ham, like the ham part of the pork, but ham. <laughs> What if it's like what if it's like country ham? It's just super yeah. salty. Well, they're from she's from the ocean. Oh, yeah, so it has to be like salty, salty as all get I mean, out. if you're like me, I'm super salty. So you are. I would be country <laughs> ham. You are from the part of the country for that type of ham. So, so <laughs> after after Kamiko gets soaked, uh he brings Ponyo over to meet the old ladies. And of course, uh I think it's Yoshi and there I can't remember who's the other one. I can't remember the other one's name, but there was Toki, who's like the really yeah, grumpy the, yeah. one. There's yeah. Yoshi, who is a voice by Betty White in the English version. Uh, he introduces them to Ponyo. They're like, oh, yeah, until Toki comes over. She's like, oh, it's hideous. It's got, it's a fish with a face on it. I was like, thank you. <laughs> it is. The and, then she, and, then she just, and then she starts yelling, tsunami. Tsunami. She's cursed, and that will bring a yeah. tsunami yep. onto them. She's not wrong. I mean, she wasn't wrong. The thing about this woman, the thing about this woman is she is grumpy and she says a lot of crazy things, but most of it actually yeah, she's happens. Actually right. So is she as crazy? 
so Ponyo or Sosuke takes Ponyo. He goes away. He goes down to like by the water, and Ponyo starts to talk. He, uh, she says uh, her own name, and then she says Sosuke, and then she's like, "I love Sosuke," and he's like, "Yay!" She yells. She doesn't just say it. Yeah. She yells. Oh yeah. She Ponyo yells. Loves Sosuke. <laughs> But then, but then tragedy strikes as the wave monsters come and engulf Sosuke and Ponyo, pull them into the water, and uh, she gets sucked out of the pail, and he's trying to swim out. And of course, as a mother or a parent, you, I would have been like, I would have dove off of the cliff. I wouldn't have even gone down the stairs. I would have been like, <laughs> like my five year old child is like up to his neck in the ocean. Like I am swan diving into that ocean, even if it causes injury. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Ponyo's gone. He's sad. And I love when they're driving home and he's eating ice cream and he's just like, <laughs> oh, he's, <laughs> he's <just> so, <laughs> so bitter. And uh, I love where she's like, she's driving like a psycho. And she's like, can I have some? As she's driving, she's like, what's the road? Fucker, what was that again? I need the visual again. <laughs> Gut, <Gug. laughs> <Gug. laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> No, anyway, no. so she's what like going. Oh, she, like she's like she's like going up the hill. And she's like, oh, it's your fa- you know, your dad's favorite flavor too. And there's like a car coming. Yeah, like, oh, just, she this. just casually, yeah. she's just like da, da, da. just drifts around it. I was like, that car is not built for the uphill, lady. It's a literal oh, Tokyo. Man. Man. And she is very excited he because uh, Sosuke's dad is coming home. Supposed to be. At this moment, she thinks, yes, he is he is coming home. Uh, they get home, and they open their front door, and I went, why is this swing to the outside? Why is this swing out? Like, who who has a, who has a door like that? Like, it's your front door to your house, and it swings out. Like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> There's a toilet flush back like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they are on the opposite side of the world, so like, yeah, it makes sense. They install that device that makes it flush the... The same way as the United States. It's the right way, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about the door, okay? When you open up a door, it's supposed to go to the ins into your house. Yeah. This okay. door opened out. That was weird. I, I, didn't really I feel like I mean, I guess like my screen door does that, but not like my you, main. I door. feel that the, if it opens out though, for protection reasons, like if you want to keep out intruders, it would be smarter, right? Because it's easier to break yeah, yeah, in. You're right. Than it would be to try to uh, rip that thing see, open. I forgot how dumb America is. Oh, we're are. super dumb. That's right. <laughs> USA. Uh-huh. USA. US. <laughs> <laughs> America, baby. So Sosuke decides he wants to leave the pail uh, hanging on the fence for, you know, Ponyo if she decides to come back. Dad calls. He's not coming home, and mom is pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she is yeah. mad. I love it. She can't even have a beer, okay? She literally opens it up and it just explodes on her. She can't even enjoy something. She is so mad. Uh, I love how, I guess, Sosuke and uh, his dad communicate with, like, the, the light. Code. And, yeah. yeah. And literally, <laughs> they're, like, having a normal conversation. And Sosuke's, you know, telling him what, what the dad's saying. And she's everything is just bug off. Bug off. Bug off. And she's doing it so fast that one time. It's like, in, bug in bug Japanese, off. she's saying jerk, which she said, uh, she's going, baka, 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 which means jerk. Oh, no. That's, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. In the English version, it is bug yep. off. That is literally what it's <laughs> Which makes, uh, makes sense to funny. the lip sync if they're doing lip sync because baka, uh, bug off, it'd be easy to. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but Sosuke, he knows how to make mom feel better. He, uh, you know he's the he's the man, he's the true man of the house at five years old. It's wild stuff. Yep. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. So Damn. Ponyo is back at her home with her dad, and you find out her name is actually Brun Brunhilde. Yep. You're like, Ugh. she's no nope, no wonder she was okay. Yeah, with she Ponyo goes. That's name. not my like, name, this. bitch. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <so. laughs> <laughs> um. And he is not happy that Ponyo wants to be human. Oh, forgot to mention that Sosuke cut himself and Ponyo licked his cut and it, and it healed him. So now she, went, uh, she, had, she has a bloodborne yeah, she, pathogen. Yep, <laughs> she went. She, got to taste blah, 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 blah. she did the lick a tongue. <laughs> Yoshi. 
Oh, that's right. But, yeah. but look at how it works too. So whatever. And uh, so yeah, she has Sosuke's DNA. So she wants to become a human, and he is like, no, no, no. And she, I like how she starts to transform. She like sprouts the the chicken arms really and the chicken so legs, and he's like, no. And I was like, and he's like squishing this bubble that she's in, and I'm like, is he trying to suffocate her? What is happening right now? Like he's like, no, you're not gonna do this. No. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I need more power. Just drinking the soul. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what he does. He's like, I need more. I need more he, magic. I'm like, I don't. I'm not strong enough to he, to contain her. And he then calls he, for the rest of the Earth spirit. Yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, he opens up. He's like, he tries to hit the spirit bomb. <laughs> got, 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 got. Yeah, <laughs> give me power, Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and. uh just really going yeah, so of course no he g or <laughs> no it's not no we tried we tried our hardest it didn't work out so well. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so he God, it's all over my lower back he, <laughs> he puts her back into like this orb that houses all of her siblings Spirit and containment. yeah and then i like how all the siblings like go around the bubble that she's contained in and like break it but, I, but also, the dad gets attacked by a bunch of crabs. A bunch of crabs break into the house or whatever the heck yeah. they're living, and yeah. he's like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta get all the these magic elixir contained." I'm like, "Why are they everywhere?" He's like, "They're all dangerous. They got a hold of this. This is gonna be bad. It's gonna break, ruin the balance of the environment." And he puts it into a vault and puts it into like a a well. So you also find out here too that he it, you because he ask Ponyo uh, why he she wants to be human and he's like I used to be human too uh, did they say that in the English version okay yeah mm -hmm. so yep. yeah he's so he's like I used to be human too and he's like you know F those people why do you want to be like them you're like I was like dude but you used to be one so it's like right also how can he breathe underwater now I guess magic it's mad magic magic well, doesn't he wear that bubble thing at points too isn't he like wearing like a bubble helmet when he's out in the water? But he like also needs water when he's on ocean. land, though. Because right, no, when he comes up out of the water that one time, he has nothing on him. Okay. Weird. I don't know, dude. It's it's just whatever. But I guess these elixirs have helped him That's become, funny, yeah. you know, able to do a lot of the things in the ocean. So magic. Um. So yeah. So Ponyo's siblings they chew her out of her bubble. She they kiss her out of the bubble. They literally do. They literally they do. Like, it's like, like this is happening, and my like <laughs> Jesus covered in these, and I was my daughter sitting next to you, like, my God, they're <laughs> killing her with kids. Park, Parker's, on it. Parker's on his best Michael Winslow game today. Like he's got all these noises. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she regrows her chicken arms and legs, and they all escape. It wasn't even just Ponyo. All the siblings are just like. Bye! See you later. She's like, she's like, look at me now, Daddy. I'm a human. <laughs> I know. Like, like Miss <laughs> Oh no, this is a horror movie. Uh, it's, just, um, it's just Full Metal Alchemist. It's fine. But uh, <laughs> her, all of her. Well, the cool thing is, all of her siblings turn into these massive fish, where I guess are, um, like, uh, it's supposed to be waves. Like they're these massive. But they like come out of the water and like there's the ships that are all like, what the heck is going on? It's so these like blue whale size. This is one of the most yeah. just the most famous scene out of the water. in the movie, right? Where she's, where she's oh, it's running. fantastic. This whole everything about the next ten minutes is fantastic. Just the sheer fact that you are like you feel great for Ponyo for escaping and she, you can see the fact that she is able to fully transform in, into a human and she's running a, a, along the waves and she's got this big smile on her face, but in the background it's, it's chaos. It is, it is the blackest skies. It's these massive waves and in the mom, Lisa, she's just like, probably go. She's probably, she's probably get out of here. I love she's at the, <laughs> Although, although Ponyo's or um, Sosuke's teacher is just like, oh yeah, you can go out in this monsoon, in this yeah, the tsunami, just... like the island's being engulfed. <laughs> well, the teacher's like, okay, I can call your mom; she can come get you. He's like, nah, it's fine. I'll just go walk. And it's she's like, store. I'll okay, take the that's shortcut. fine. And what he's just like, shortcut? he literally it's opens next... up the door, and it's just like, <laughs> just 
tornado. <laughs> like everything is happening outside. It it's makes like, me Hi, little five year old boy. It makes me think that this is obviously not the first time they've had storms like this. So they're probably yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely not. This is Japan, yeah. so they get a lot of storms. Uh, but yeah, he walks over to the old folks' home and he goes in there, and his mom's you know she's prepping the the power went out and. They got all the. I love how they lined up all the old the old ladies up against the windows. Like this is like the most entertainment they've gotten in a long time. And I'm like, to be honest, I would I would 100 percent join those old ladies and sit there and watch a storm. I, oh, I love, love it, watching dude. thunderstorms and stuff like that. It's so cool. Uh, so as long as I'm inside, I'll watch them. And so, Sosuke goes up to them and gives them all gifts. Um, I'm guessing are they? Is it like what? What are they like? Kind of like origami type yeah, things. Yeah. I know origami is not Japanese, right? Is origami yes. Japanese? Or is origami Origami Chinese? Is, Chi- is Japanese. That's a Japanese word, yeah. Okay. I apologize. You had it right, though. I didn't mean but to you, offend. Okay, I but figured... But you did yeah, have it right. I, so, yeah, he gives them these little things of origami, and uh, everybody, you know, the, the the two ladies, Yoshi and the other one, I don't know what the other one's name was, uh, but they were like, yay, thanks, this is great. And then Toki is just like, you know, he's telling her what it is, and she's just like, it looks like a sailor hat. Why does it look like this? Why does it look like that? What did you do to this? Don't give me a pack of smokes. <laughs> I, was uh, I was like, damn, Kumiko lady. Kumiko. Oh, Kumiko. Okay, so what was the girl's name? What was her? What was his friend's little, name? Wasn't her name Kumiko? Or was it Karen? She was She was acting like a Karen. That's her name. <laughs> she was a Karen. Yeah, she 100% was a little Karen. She was the birth of a, Karen, of a future Karen. Um, but yeah, Toki, she's just... She's just not not for it, man. She's just grumpy as heck. She stays grumpy even after all the magical shit happens. <laughs> She's on it. But yeah, the ride home. The ride home is insanity. This mother doesn't give a flying f how she's getting home. I love when she literally gets to the dry dock. And they're like, you can't go. It's flooded. You see, there's literally waves that look like they're about 150 feet tall, about to crash into the shore. She's just looking at it like she's about to play chicken with this wave. She's looking at it like if, if she stares at it long enough, that wave's going to be like, I don't want to mess with this chick. And she's like, turn around. The waves turn around. Yeah. And, then, and she's just like, screw it. She's driving, no joke, a tin can with wheels. Okay. Like this is a little Absolutely. tiny car. And she just blasts through this water, probably about a foot and a half deep. It's literally stalling out. It's good. like she ain't making it through, but she does. She is determined. I love how the guys are just like, don't do it, Lisa. She's like, I got to get home. Gets through there. She doesn't even have a seat belt on through half of this. <laughs> he's like, She's like, flinging like all over the, around the everywhere. Car. Oh, my God. Are you OK, Sosuke? <laughs> That's why he's seeing little girls running on waves. He's got brain damage. But or the something. thing is that if I saw a storm like this, I am like, I am not stopping until I am getting to where I need to be. I'm not stopping. I don't care if you said, I don't care what you saw. Okay. I'm not stopping. But the fa- sheer fact that she's driving and Sosuke goes, Mom, there's a little girl out there running on the waves. And I, as the mother, would have went, Shut up. We got to get home. Do you see these waves right now? We could die. No, instead, they stop at the side of the road and casually get out and go, Hey, Sosuke, wh- what are you talking about? Where's that girl? Where's that little girl? He's like, she was out there. I think she fell. I don't see her. Casually. No rush at all. She's just like, hmm. Huh. Hey, Sosuke, we probably should go now. Probably, and then he probably almost get back in. away. <laughs> and she just casually is like, I got you. Don't worry. And I'm like, my that mom's strength. Never did Carissa nuts. Japan, apparently. This woman is nuts. Oh, man. Where the hell am I? <laughs> <laughs> child blows away but yeah the ocean the ocean is just angry uh panyo finds the pale and so i love the transformation where when uh panyo gets to the shore and, and she she's on the road she kind of resorts back to that like chicken form i'm gonna call it the chicken yeah. form because that's, that's, that's what it looks like yeah. In the hands. yeah uh but then as she's running and she yells out sosuke she uh you know, turns fully back into the little girl. I love how she just runs right past Lisa and just hugs Sosuke. Yep. And, and Lisa just casually walks up. They're still outside, by the way. There's a freaking tsunami, monsoon, uh, typhoon, freaking every weather 
storm you could imagine is happening right now to this island. And uh, they're just casually hanging out outside. She's just like, do you know her? And he's like, uh, at first. But then she kind of makes it known that she is Ponyo. And he's like, oh, mom, it's Ponyo, my fish. And she goes, oh, all right. Let's go yeah. inside and talk about this some more. This seems normal. You're like, everybody's super accepting of this idea. Like, all right. uh, man, I listen. This so every day. I wish I wish Americans could be more chill like this. It's like. Uh, like imagine just a, a largemouth bass, just you know your 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 kid befriends a, a largemouth bass, and it magically becomes human. And you, as a parent, go and yeah, uh, seems normal to me. Bring him on in. That Billy bass? <laughs> it's just like a Billy bass. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that's where it came <laughs> from. That was a person of, once. Uh, the other old lady's <laughs> name is Norika. Norika. It was going to okay. drive me nuts. So Kamiko was girl. the yeah, little so it was girl. Drive me the nuts. Karen so the girl. Wikipedia, right. actually, I was looking at Wikipedia. They actually have it wrong. They have Lily Tomlin as uh, Kumiko, and that's as Kumiko. It's, but yeah, that's but okay. Norica. So yeah, okay. So yeah, Mom is really calm about this whole situation. Um, I love that uh, Ponyo is her feet. She can use his hands and. They like hold oh, hands with so their feet. Is trying to do it too. Yeah, it's like, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, I dropped it so, in the water. Here you go. You I, I want it. It's just like a thumbnail. <laughs> like, so oh, I'm about God. to get this scene. I want to talk about that. The fact that Ghibli food is is yes. so this. I want to eat every single bit of it. I the way they draw food is like the honey that they put into the tea and oh, the. Yeah. The ramen. The ramen. Oh, oh. I, I could have dove head first into that bowl of ramen. Golly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have watched videos of people that remake uh, Ghibli food, and it just, I'm like, I would gain so much weight eating all of this food because it looks so it good. Oh, absolutely. They make the cheap 50 cent ramen just look is exquisite. So because that's all it yeah. is. So I will say this. I do elevate my uh, ramen. I actually made some this morning when I was watching, but I uh, I always put like egg in mine and like I like put green onion and all kind of stuff in mine. <laughs> I keep that kind of stuff and I put I put like sriracha in it to give it some heat. And do you, do you use the packets that come with it? Uh, yeah, I use the packets that come with it, but I also add seasoning to it. I try not to. Oh. I try not to use as much of the seasoning because that's where all the sodium is. Like if you look at the back of a ramen, oh, bag, bad, no, no, no. It's I mean, bad. listen, I devour, I still devour, but it's, it's like, bad. yeah, it's awful. It's so bad. <laughs> okay, Parker. So discounting the ramen you buy at the store, have you had ramen? I have never like, had. Uh, so I've even had, packaged ramen. I've had. So when we went to Disney a couple of years ago, you can take it as it is here. But we it, we went to Epcot, and you know how they have all the countries. Uh, well, yeah. I went. We got ramen from a couple different countries i think one of them was japan so it was like i mean i guess you could take it or leave it with how real of it of ramen it is but it definitely isn't i mean i'm guessing it's not like straight up frozen ramen or the you know dried out ramen that you buy it for at walmart for 50 cents well was this, i was gonna say like because even even packaged ramen is extremely varied in japan it's not like our you know ramen i've had ramen japanese cheap. like store bought ramen but it was like the extremely hot one and i did it for a challenge when i streamed and it was put up there this is the best one oh yeah yeah. if you ever go to the they have it it send me the send me a picture of that i'll I'll check they have it wall they have a usually have soy and miso or the two we try it's not it's it's a really good quality noodle and it's a liquid bag and it doesn't it's not it's liquid Mm -hmm. it's not it's not dry powder i've had other ramens that use liquid It, it, there used to be bowls that I would buy when I worked at Walmart. I used to try pretty much everything that they yeah, would sell. Yeah, when it yeah. came to like microwaveable foods, uh, but they had a rom. They had ramen bowls that had like the liquid, um, yeah, stuff, and that Oils I and loved. That was way They're better so than like yeah, the ramen I got around the corner here. <laughs> To my cup noodle. Damn, well, my cup noodle. Hey, bro. cup noodle. I will not bash it's cup good. noodle. Cup, cup noodle, noodle is, is oh, when you're no, in a dude, pinch. Got all this rest, rough time. Yes. Listen, there's there's been times where I will forget my lunch, and our vending machine at work has cup of noodle, and it's like, well, I guess yeah. I had yeah. a cup of noodle today. You, you just sometimes worse. you just got to go with worse. it. You know, got to well, do yeah. it. Oh, absolutely. 
Well, we went, uh, we went, just got back from vacation and we actually had our first like proper ramen oh. restaurant. So good. So uh, good. Like, you know, with all that, I, I got, uh, what did I get? You got the pork katsu. Tonkatsu. Yeah, the pork katsu. The tonkatsu. Or tonkatsu. That's it. that's it. I got tonkatsu ramen. And it's just, I didn't care for the seasoned egg. Was it my thing? But it was really good. It looked lovely. But very different. <laughs> All right, we need to stop talking think. about food because I am starving I, now. I, I, yeah, it's, I just it's, had it's after 10 o'clock and I don't want to eat before I go to bed, but like I kind of want to eat. We actually now. have <laughs> ramen places here, but we have one that's actually like it's a tiny, not much. I mean, it's probably made twice the size of this room I'm in now. It's called Sushi Masa. And it's actually Japanese owned and they make, but they do yeah. all like actual cheap uh, Japanese dishes and they're, ramen and sushi are the big thing, but they also do like katsudon yeah. and all of the like, dude, Ooh. and you, I could take my whole family there and we can all eat really well. And I spend less than 40 bucks. What do you, what I would spend at like McDonald's for four people. And it's oh, so that's, good. That's, that's, that's great. Dude. I remember going to McDonald's and you could buy five, uh, five burgers for five bucks. Yeah. Yeah, they used to be like thirty-nine cent cheeseburgers uh, on Tuesdays. I remember when I was in high yeah, school. Yeah, I would destroy every mm-hmm. single one of them. Yep. And now we're oh, the good times <laughs> have gone. Yeah, carry on. Um, Sorry, food. So yeah, she discovers tea with honey. She discovers. I mean, of course, the fact that she loves ham. She talks about her mom and dad. How her dad? She's not a big fan of her dad, but she, um, she loves her mom. But her mom big is like scary. always doing stuff. She's yeah. She's <laughs> she's. She's huge. Uh, you find out that the generator won't start because the storm has knocked the power out. So they're going to. I don't know. Did the storm. Did their yes, power, the get power get knocked out? Yes, the power gets knocked out. And you need, okay, it, so they pro, it's a propane generator. Right. So I love the, one of the lines. I love how Soski is like, we have our own propane tank. <laughs> He's propane so proud. And uh, so they go. Yes. They go back there and she can't get it started and Ponyo uses some sort of magic to get it started. But I, it, it kind of creeps me out a little bit when she like uses her magic and she goes back to the chicken form for a minute and then she goes back and you're like, oh. And well, then her dad is Qui-Gon Jinn. So. That, that is true. That is true. I mean, just use the force. Like- also, I need to cook ramen the way that they cook ramen here because they use the bowl with the top on it. Yeah. You just pour... Uh, water, hot, really, a uh, boiling water on there. You put it in, put a cover on it, and yeah, wait so three the, minutes. Yeah, because I, I, when I don't cook it with egg and stuff like that, yeah, you just get a bigger bowl and you take a plate and just put it on top and you let it rest. Because yeah, so yep. but yeah, that, I mean, you don't need to go buy a fancy bowl for that. You just put a plate on top of a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, they add all the. She adds all oh, the, yeah, the stuff, stuff to it, and that makes it just oh, divine. So and the first thing that she goes after is the the ham. She destroys it. She also, oh, but, <laughs> oh yeah. So mom decides she needs to go back to the senior center because it's getting bad out there. I was like, why did you leave in the first place? Like, like, you get home and you're like, oh man, it's really bad out there. It was bad out there the whole time. Like even before you yeah. left, you're like, I gotta go back. I'm gonna leave my. F- hey, but you're gonna stay here because Ponyo fell asleep because Ponyo was falling asleep while she was eating her ramen. So she's like, you need to stay here and be with Ponyo, and. As a five-year-old kid, you go, I'm five. Probably shouldn't be here alone. But, uh, but he's the man of the house. Sure. Let's let's go with it. Uh, yeah, just leave me here alone uh, at five years old with a fish girl who we've known for about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, so we then find out that all of this, cr- I, that Ponyo has pretty much caused chaos. It Like, the balance of the world has... It, well, the ba- there is no balance. It's out of whack, and the dad is freaking out, and and the moon is slowly encroaching like Majora's Mask. Um, it's even got a face. <laughs> it's got like a fish face instead of a person face. <laughs> the old Greg face. One <laughs> glove, glove. Yes, uh-huh. yes. And then uh, as he's sitting outside Sosuke's house, the mom shows up. Uh, Was uh, Gran Mamare? And she is, like we said, she is very big. And she just floats around. I like the je- uh, the jellyfish and, umbrella uh, she's got. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, well, actually, she, she shows up before this uh, because Sosuke's dad is out with his boat. He's like, they're looking out on the horizon like, what the heck is going on out there? Like, why is there a big wall of water? Like, this is weird. And why is the moon so close? This is... 
This is weird. Are we alive right now? Is this the abyss? Is this is this the Bermuda Bermuda Triangle? We're nowhere near this, but like this is crazy. Um, And that's just where Godzilla was coming up. Um, That was actually Uh, okay. Okay, that's I'll I'll take that comparison. That was his entry. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, we saw it in Godzilla 2014. You know, he causes tsunamis. Absolutely, it's normal. But uh, you find out it's just a bunch of ships that like stalled out. They're just all together along this like wall of water until she shows up and makes everything okay again. And they all turn on. And it's like, okay, cool. And then she's just like, bye. Magic. Pretty much uh, Dr. Wizard Master <laughs> uh, talks with, <laughs> with, uh, with Mommy yeah. Thickness. And they, yes. I mean, Dude. come on, man. She yeah. thick. <laughs> <laughs> she can rock me to sleep any day uh, <laughs> so she pretty much is like he's like she wants to, Ponyo wants to be human and, and to be honest when you have 7,000 kids I would have been like which one's Ponyo again uh, <laughs> oh that one. Oh right the one who's the only one who's bigger the one than I the gave rest magic powers to yeah okay uh, so she's like well I mean if the boy loves her and she loves him, then she could be human. But there's got to be, she, she got to, he's got to show true love to her and vice versa. And so he's just like, oh, okay. Well, I'm still going to try to prevent this from happening. I'm just going to put her to sleep pretty much. It's like, Ooh. and I like how she just smiles the whole time. She's like, why did I have so many kids with you? You guys suck, bro. <laughs> Look, they can't all be winners. No, no, no. So the next day they wake up and uh, the ocean is right at their door. It's right there. The ocean has consumed the island. And uh, they're like, well, we got to get to my mom. So how are we going to do that? And they're like, well, what about this little tiny boat? And she uses her magic and makes it a workable boat, which has a candle, which powers it. Like it heats up the the water and it causes it to go. I was like, that is awesome. Uh, I want to point out during this whole scene, if you all weren't paying attention, there's an octopus that is committing crimes. Oh, the one that's like scene. slowly like crawling towards the front door. Yeah, it's 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 outside. Yeah. And then it's on stealing this footwear and then it's breaking into the home because nobody shut the door. I was yeah, like, I think he's going to steal more things than the shoes he already took. No he's got eight arms. He can take a lot of stuff yeah, no and they just leave. No it one's going to know. He knows. No. It's like, uh, like no fingerprints. Finding, like octopus <laughs> and finding Dory. That's that's that, that octopus. Al Bundy. I have no idea. I don't remember. I watched that movie. This Al movie. Bundy as an octopus. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, they they take their they take their trip on the boat. I like he's got his little captain's hat because his mom was like, "Here, put your dad's hat on. You're the man of the house. You're the captain now." I. <laughs> Just sea shanties. I think I'm, I think I'm oh, boat, yeah. really. Uh, and they are going across and they find all these prehistoric fish. And I just love how, again, casually just like, yeah, those are prehistoric fish. They're from this era, this era, and this era. And this is like, oh, that's normal. Okay. There was, a, there was a lot of lobed fish. Well, it's all the fish that have like the the plates on them. And these are actually yeah, fish that tops. lived before dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Like it was like the like I said like coelacanths or a group of lobed fish. It was like those and then their predecessors. And then we even saw some um, um, sea scorpions, like ancient giant sea scorpions, which I was kind of burned out. There was no anomalocaris. Like I was telling Angela, I was like, "There's no anomalocaris in this." Like I demand more arthropods. Blah 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 blah. But it was cool. It was neat as fuck. I wouldn't get in that. One. Sorry, ah, it, 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 <laughs> it's ham, um, <laughs> ham. <laughs> I was upset that no, not upset. I did. I would never have gotten to that no, water. There's no way. No. no, no, no. I know he that like again. Nobody. They would ham me. To nobody death. in this in this movie is like concerned about anything. No, it's just like no. oh, okay, we gotta go. We have to do this now. All right, we're gonna do this. Like the mom is never concerned about anything. Like her son literally almost blows away like a kite, and she's just like. I got you, son, and then pulls him back in. Like not, not like. Oh, hold on, son. It's like I got it you. Makes, Don't you worry. I wasn't so, scared at all. Just like it makes, spins him and throws. It him makes into the me car. wonder if 
So the Ponyu has, she is magic, right? That it maybe her magical abilities are affecting the people around her to see things differently or mm-hmm. maybe view things differently because right. it's affecting the weather and it's affecting all these other elements around her. Maybe it's affecting. Right. Because we're going to see it more in the next scene when they meet the, the couple on the boat and they're just casually like, Oh, hi there. Our town's underwater, but we're <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, oh, Hey, aren't you yeah. so scared? Aren't you Lisa's son? I think, I guess we see this couple earlier in the movie. Um, when, uh, Sosuke's going to school in the beginning or something like that. Okay. I don't, know. I don't remember. I just read the fact about it. Um, I just think uh, I just think of Seinfeld when she's feeding him the soup or she's feeding the woman the soup. So like, that's good soup. <laughs> no soup for you. <laughs> no soup for you. <laughs> good soup. <laughs> but uh, but then it like you know, Ponyo is seeing certain things for the first time, so she's very curious about things. So. Um, initially she was going to give the soup to the baby because the baby, I love the baby's like scowling the whole time. Like, an oh, I, think, baby. I love what the, the mom's is like, oh, I think she likes you. And she's like, <laughs> like, I don't think so. I'll swallow your soul. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? Swallow your soul, swallow your soul. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, jams the thermos into its mouth and his head explodes. Like, What's going on? <laughs> Don't worry, she could put it back together. It's turning into dead alive. Um, but yeah, she this, we get yeah. the whole thing where she was going to give the soup to the baby, but the baby can't have it, so the mother eats it, and and at for and like you think like Ponyo's going to like just rip it from her, like no 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 no, it was for the baby. If it's not going to be for the baby, it's from it's for nobody. It's for me. But she then explains the fact, like oh, if you mind if I have it, it'll because I uh because the only thing the baby can have is milk. And the soup will help me produce milk. And I was like, wow, this is pretty. Uh, we're getting some 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 lessons here uh, in this rated G kids movie, uh, which is fine. It wasn't like super, you know, it wasn't like super inappropriate. No, it was, like it was, it was just vague. a basic explanation of, you know, how to like, taking care of a baby or just how it works. Um, Boobs are made for eating. I just love though when she they leave. They're like, okay, see you later. I love it. Like <laughs> the town, the town's going by on boats. Are just like, hey, we're going to the hotel. Hey, what's going on? Hey, we gotta go. And uh, and then Ponyo's like, I gotta go back and squish this baby's head a few times. I'm just gonna run back and just go. They're just like, just squish. Like, and I love how the mom's just sitting there like, I'm allowing this to happen uh, right now. So- she could be yeah, literally killing my child. Fully fully <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> she's like the baby's like the baby has a cold and ponyo runs over oh to that's it right she like, like rubs allow me allow yeah. me to uh proper formally introduce yeah. uh our, ourselves lar- fellow large head creature and just go boom like nails yeah. it in the head so, break damage for life and then just like runs off butt face at her the whole time <laughs> <laughs> next time you will respect me talk shit get hit bro <laughs> <laughs> You ain't ham to me, boy. <laughs> God. So Ponyo passes out, and you find out that she she passes out or falls asleep because her power, her magic is starting to dwindle. And uh, pretty much the whole plan was is that the the candle, the original candle, went out, and he got uh, Sosuke got another candle from the gentleman on the boat. And he's and he's like, oh well, do you need more? And he's like, no, I, uh, Ponyo can just make it bigger. Just casually mentioning magic in front of people, and nobody's reacting to it. Um, but because she falls asleep, she can't do the magic, and so the can't he can't get the candle in the boat to move. So he's got to hop into the water again, like you, Dan said, I'm not hopping in this water. This kid casually just jumps in the water and pushes this boat the rest of the way until the boat starts to shrink back down to what's original size. It was kind of sad because like the boat shrinks, but also his hat and his yeah. and his stuff. And I'm like, that was his that was his hat, man. That sucks. She, she can make it. Whoa. Big, fine. She'll fix it. Hopefully. She, boom. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, she's talented. This is clean. So clean. they finally get to a part of the road that's not flooded. <laughs> and Sosuke sees his mom's car. And it gets really dark at this moment because he sees it it's got all the stuff that she had brought with her still in the car. The door is open and she's just gone. She's just not there. And so he is 
crying and I'm holding it back. And, you know, I love when Ponyo walks up and she's like, we got water coming out of your face for her. like, what's that? You're leaking. And, and I Step love how, up, but on. I love though that he is crying. He is like a lot of tears are coming down his face. And as soon as she grabs his hand to say, let's go find your mom. He stops crying and there's, and he's like, okay. And walks on. So like that whole, like what Paul was saying, like maybe just her, like there's just something She's about her like an impact that is yeah yeah that is that is causing these these moods for people i just assume she just walked up looked him stone face in the eye and she's yeah, like she's man like, up you've been on this earth for five long years you've seen some stuff man <laughs> Get wake together, up brother <laughs> brother and then uh, they show the shore, and there's just empty wheelchairs just chilling by the shore. And I went, what happened here? They've been sacrificed Ninja to the water Irish. gods. <laughs> <laughs> they go, <laughs> But they go down to the bottom of the ocean, and everybody's down there now. I'm like, is this supposed to be some, like, euphemism for Reverse death? rapture? Like, are they all? It's cocoon. Are they? It's they, cocoon. Well, they even thought they even t- uh, talk about it. Like the three old ladies, they're like, "Are we dead? Like, why are we being able to run around?" They're like, "We don't." They're like, I, "We don't care." Like she goes, "I can use my legs now. I don't care what this." Yeah, but also like Lisa's there too, talking to uh to the grandma Mare, and uh I love it. We're like, what are they talk? What is she talking about with her over there? What is she talking about? He's like, I don't know, but it's probably private. It's like, but I want to know, and they're just like, "Hey, Lisa." What are you talking about over there? We want to know. Come over here and talk to us. She's probably signed some life debt to her because it feels they're all dead. They're all dead. It's all. It's got dark. Uh, But the the test of love is coming up, and they're kind of preparing for that uh, that moment. We then see the fact that Ponyo's magic has pretty much dwindled down to nothing as she turns back into a little teeny tiny goldfish. And again, Sosuke thinks that she's dead. She's like, don't be dead on me. I'm like, son of a <laughs> this fucking movie. <laughs> I did it. Hey, I got my first one in. <laughs> my hammer. When, 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 when the last rose falls off, when the last petal falls off the rose, she'll stay a fish forever. Yes. What movie is da, this? Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gaston Weird. Get out of here. Our movie. <laughs> Kicks Beauty and the Fish. Can we have, oh, can we have like a Kicks him back off the castle. Gaston. Oh He's a shark. <laughs> He's just talking yeah. shark. Shark Ston. Bruce. Can it be Will Smith? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that awful movie. God, Martin Scorsese Dude. was in that movie as a, as as a Martin, shark. Or no, he was as he a. He was the godfather. Oh, yeah, he was a puppet. Oh, Dude, yeah, he did I Robot and Shark Tale in the same move, same year. Will Smith did. What a rough. I like you it. like it? I like Ro- I Robot. Robot was so I like much better. I'm, a, I'm a, listen. I, I, you know, people can say what they want. I enjoy Will Smith. I there like are things Smith. that I. There are Will Smith movies that I refuse to watch. I will never it's watch. Awful. After Earth. That movie is it's putrid. God awful. Um. It's and it, and to be honest, it's not even about him. It's his son. Well, his he's son not barely in the movie. It's Jaden Smith's horrible. movie. Yeah. Um. Not a big fan of the suit of Suicide Squad, but he wasn't the problem no, with that just, either. It was a mess. But to me, like I, I've always enjoyed Will Smith. Yeah, he, like you know the whole thing at the Oscars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you can say what you want, but I feel like there are people out there who've done way worse who are still in Hollywood. Being yeah, loved yeah. Like, it was just a people, so. you know, it was a mess up. Um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's you know what I thought of after that whole thing I was like, oh no, it's like if Marty just just was just talking crap about Gloria from Madagascar because they were in the same animated movie <laughs> together. Oh man, but I love Bad Boys and oh, I love Bad Boys. Yeah, can do no wrong with me. I love them. Uh, but back to this movie. Uh, <laughs> Sosuke meets the uh master doctor wizard man and <laughs> and i love the where grand he is warlock if you will <laughs> and he's Skirt. he's it's trying to explain the whole thing movie. about how like hey you got to go down to the bottom of the ocean cuz we got to you know that there's a test that's going to happen and 
you know, if you really love uh, Ponyo, you come with me. And I love a <laughs> Toki's like, don't do it. This, this man's said, crazy. I didn't said, go with him. Uh, and he's like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> boo. <laughs> he's like, that man's crazy. And I just love, he's like, miss, I'm trying to help. You could have went down there too. He's like, you murdered them all. You murdered them. You grand. <laughs> They have QA non grandma over here, just, just all these conspiracies. <laughs> yes, but um, the uh, the whole this whole scene though is is, is great, and uh, he's like, okay, I'm gonna listen to Toki because clearly she's right, and he runs. But when he's running along the the boards, he's not running straight up; he's like leaning. Yeah. And I'm like, how is he still running? There's no way. This is impossible. He's, he's literally like running problem, like this. Dude. I'm like, watch some Matrix stuff right now. But when he gets to her, he that I love that Ponyo just slaps her in the face. And then he just like, sh- his head just goes he right her. into her chest. He's like, yeah, he spears her. <laughs> Which collapses her ribs. <laughs> She's dead. She, she Kills died. her instantly. On top I, I of just, water. Yeah, I just love that she just gets sent down to the bottom of the ocean, and I just love that the other old ladies are like casually catch her. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing about all this. Of course, this is this whatever. It's a movie. Like this child has impacted her chest. This is an old ass woman. It probably broke, ah, probably broke her in half. Right? She's done. Right? She's two pieces. We just can't see it under the clothes. And then this well of water hits them, which of uh, you know you got to think, guys. A gallon of water is like eight pounds. How much water is this? I don't care if it's magic water. It just plows into both. It kind of absorbs yeah, so It dead. kind of Absolutely. absorbs him. Like, yeah, but it's still a lot of just, I don't know. Yeah. No, she's fine. Just walk yeah. it off. She's it's, fine. Scissor me too. Whoa. Scissor me. Okay. Uh, I will um, never think about it in another way. <laughs> So he gets down there, and I think it's—is uh, it Grandma Mare asks about uh, if she if he would love her no matter what. Basically. If if he love if he as loves a her fish or as a human, she yeah. is, and he's like, right, and he's like, I love all the Ponyos, and they're like, well, that's the answer we wanted. You sur- win, survey says <laughs> you win. Do not discriminate <laughs> upon looks was the top answer. Toppy. Good answer. Everyone's like, good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> like this family. Do like we have a, love all ponios? Octopus oh! and stuff. <laughs> the answers are on the board. Oh my god. So Steve, like Steve, <laughs> Steve Harvey is a fish, please. Or like just <laughs> a fish with like mustache. his like wicked stash. <laughs> You'd be a seal, right? So the whole thing is. <laughs> the walrus, the walrus, He'd the have walrus, to like... be. He would have to be. Oh man! So they, the the rule, or the whole thing is, is if you you know, if you kiss the bubble, she becomes a she'll become a girl again, and uh, and then after that, do the do all the siblings become human because they all like start shooting away and start forming into different things? And I was like, what is happening right now? I think it's just Ponyo. I think this was just like a celebratory. Yeah, they got to be there for the moment okay. kind of thing. So they all go back to the, sh- or, you know, to land. And I love where the, you got the one orderly guys is like, I'll get all your wheelchairs for you. Like, nah, no need. We got new legs now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, they're great. And uh, Ponyo's dad says goodbye. And, or the, I'm sorry, the master doctor wizard. Man. Master Master man. Man. yeah uh <laughs> he says goodbye and sosuke's dad shows up hey uh, he's home our, hey matt hey, Ma- hey matt damon, matt damon. damon. <laughs> guess you were him the whole time and uh the end of it is sosuke well it wasn't even sosuke like kissing the bubble on purpose ponyo pops the the bubble up so that sosuke kisses it and then she transforms and it's, it's famous, a freeze frame. Yeah, the famous shot of that will end up becoming a poster yep. and everything. And that is it. Dude. That is Ponyo from 2008. Oh I have a closing statement. Okay. Oh, Lord. So the, you know, the warlock yes. of witness and 
<laughs> the Duke of Nam. The Warlock is that, of... is that his porn name? <laughs> <laughs> I know why he got with the the physical embodiment of the ocean, right? Why is that? Because he almost every woman woman in this movie he made wet in some way, shape, or form. Right. He did. All the old ladies even got he, with. Uh, he liked them all. They even got with Phil Skay's mom was in the water. All of them. He's just really good at it. He's walking around with that giant tub of lube. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Grandmaster Gruel. On the Vintage Video Podcast, we'll be reviewing every single wide release of the 1980s in chronological order. Over 250 episodes to enjoy and thousands more to come. John enters the store now to order another can of ether. I picture him outside like Homer with the gas <laughs> hall. One for you, one for me. I also like to think about that the kids renew their vow not to talk about the murder. By, by murdering someone. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking a blood oath with someone else's blood. This stuff is seven times more powerful than uranium. And yeah. they, they open up the vault that it's contained in, not wearing any kind of protective nope. gear. Yeah. And it's wooden crates. Wooden crates. It's like the guys in Chernobyl picking up the graphite rocks yeah. and going, eh, because there's, there's rocks. Hugging the elephant foot. <laughs> just like, oh, this thing's smooth. It's so warm. He turns to dial the number from the classified ad without even thinking about the numbers. <laughs> we know this because we can hear his thoughts and he's talking about how AJ was right that ninjas are misdirecting him. They're misdirecting I really wish that he'd turn to the fundamental like, six, six. Vintage video. We're rewatching the '80s, so you don't have to. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's uh, <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go around the room and talk about our final thoughts on Ponyo. Let's start with our guest, Paul. Uh, Tell us, I guess, again yeah, how much you uh, absolutely. I lo- I absolutely love this <laughs> film. Uh, uh, I believe I've, in one of our conversations, I I give you like my my top ten list, or it might have been Dustin. I gave it my top ten animated list, and this is on it. Um, it, uh, objectively is probably not one of Ghibli's best films, but I, I I have a sentimentality towards it and because of my daughter loving it. And it's just, it's, it's the most lighthearted movie that he ever did. Um, didn't have some kind of negative, like his Totoro's uh, is lighthearted, but their mom has like cancer. So it's like, okay, there's still that aspect of it. Whereas Eric Kiki's is pretty lighthearted, but like it, but this one is just it, the scale of the animation is so much bigger. And um, yeah, I absolutely love this movie. It is uh, not, not my favorite Ghibli film, but um, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it's one of those, I usually watch it probably once a year, at least uh, my daughter watches it. one I feel like once a week, so, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful film. Uh, and uh, one of, the, his final films and, until he made his comeback. Which, by the way, I was wrong. This was not the last Disney movie. Arietti is the last uh, Disney released, which is the movie after this one uh, released Ghibli film or distributed. After that, G Kid, uh, G Four Kids or G Kids, whatever it is, took over. So, sorry, I'm, I'm I was I didn't want to get uh, commented at after people listen. <laughs> <laughs> Please comment. Yes, tell please us tell us. Damn. Please tell us exactly. how wrong we were. <laughs> Angela, I still thoroughly enjoyed this movie as many times as we've watched it. It's it's still good. Yes, it's still not my favorite Ghibli movie. I still have that one place in my heart for well, Mononoke, just because it was my first first watch. So that will always be my. But this is right there. Right there. Oh, it, it'll always be there. What? What? Oh. oh I'm, I'm not looking at you for fun. Okay, that's fair. I look at you every day. Oh, God. Uh, no, I, I I really enjoy this movie. It, I, You know, we kind of poke fun a little bit at, like, the fantastical nature of it. That's kind of the point, right. I guess. Like, about even we joked about, like, certain things not making sense. Like, why don't they just go along with it? Like, just let them go. Like, we don't need an explanation about this. Just let the, no, just let the I just I just want to come. I just want to point it out. Yeah, it's magical fish. It's not like is, is the, 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 right. the title yeah. character. I mean, to yeah. be honest, there could be a perfectly normal explanation. Paul probably mentioned it, the fact that she's magical. So she probably yeah. is able to put some sort of, like, spell on them to kind of not have the... Uh, 
the fear emotion, like you know, where you're just like, that's a massive tsunami wave. I probably should be reacting different, but instead, it'll be fine. They're all wearing ponyo colored glasses. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. It is a fun movie. I, I love the dub cast, and you know, I need to listen to the Japanese version. It's very good point. too. It's I haven't done it yet. Oh, I'm sure it is, and, and it, they'll they'll do like obviously inflections and stuff better. Yeah, than Japanese English. voice I think that's the only thing so with dubs. Is there's always there's always that there's so, always awkward. If you have some, if you have Max, it the has movie. the Japanese audio version. Yes, yes. I did see yeah, it. I did. I did see it after I was done because. All of Ghibli's movies are on Max right now. At least almost all of them. Grave of are. Fireflies isn't on there, Most and I don't think Kaguya is on there. But there's a there's a, a like a very small amount, like two or three. But but the but the the Japanese version of this was uh like yeah. So instead of changing the language like you would on Netflix, they actually have the option as its own solo title. Yep. Yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the hand drawn animation is fun. I love the fish stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's good time. Just I can't say anything more than than everybody else has said at this point. It's it's a fun movie. Go watch it. And uh, like I said, let us know how you like your ham. Mm-hmm. Do you like it wet and bland or a little dry and salty? You just let us know. This is going to be the ham edition Warm. of dissect that film because it's just going to be. We're going to make sure this is uh, as kid friendly as possible, even though it's not going to be kid friendly because there was going to be ham. It ham friendly. Mm-hmm. Gotta get that hot ham in your face. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Might as well. Uh, <laughs> are you done, Dave? I was just talking about food. It's... Well, yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, good. Okay. I'm good. Okay. This is my first. Uh, this is uh, my first Ghibli movie, and um, it was really fun to kind of throw it on, be able to just throw it on with my kids around. And my so wait, 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 hold on. Um, so this is your first ever Ghibli film. Yes, I've never seen a. Oh, I thought you meant this was your first just Ponyo watch. Okay, interesting. No. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I have been recommended it many times, or you know, recommended movies. I've listened. I listened to your uh, your Mononoke episode, and I was like, I, I just have such a huge list, and I am slowly going to make my way through at least the ones I can access. Um, if I can find some in the wild for cheap, I'm probably I'll snag those as well. Uh, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I, it, they just, I've avoided them not on purpose. It's just not been something I've been like, Oh, I get you. I, I think the next step, if you really enjoyed, if what you're about to hear from you, if you enjoyed this film, the next step would be spirited away. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's definitely the one yep. I was eyeing. It won the Academy uh, Award next, but, so. uh I thought this movie was beautiful. I loved the, uh, of course, watching the English dub. The English dub was done really well. Uh, Tina Fey's performance was the only one that was kind of shoddy for me. Uh, and also Matt Damon. I didn't even know he was the voice of one of the characters until the very end when I was watching the credits. But uh, I really liked the performances from the uh, from Jonas and Cyrus uh, for Ponyo and for uh, Sosuke. I thought they were really well done. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching the Japanese uh, version of this movie because I usually, like I've I've stated before, I I usually watch subbed uh, when it comes to foreign movies because I just I want to listen to the natural language of wherever it's from. Animation is slightly different for me. I could go either way if it's a good voice cast. Uh, there are some animes I know that have horrendous English dubs, and I'm just like I refuse. Uh, so at least they were able to get like some big names um, to who did. a I, I thought a pretty good job. Uh, the animation is gorgeous. The fact that it's strictly 2d with no CG. Fantastic. The story is great. It's, it's simple, but it's not. And just everything that happens in it is just, it's just absolutely just gorgeous. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. My kids uh, or my the uh, my wife i should say the one who actually watched the majority of the movie with me uh she like she enjoyed it very much uh it's definitely uh a catchy song at the end my daughter was singing it <laughs> we were just in the panya panya <laughs> yeah really good really good i'm i'm glad that we we did this and we're finally jumping into uh studio julie i was scared though because it was because of how like 
made for kids it is. Like I was very concerned on how we were going to talk about it. But now after doing it, I was like, I shouldn't be nervous about any movie because we can dissect that film any movie we can, <laughs> that's out there, no matter how so pity it the is. The Ponyo theme song in the English version, it's an English version of the song, correct? Okay. Yes. So I guess, so there was the version right after the movie ends, which I guess is a, um, it was not the remix. It was like a, uh, just an English dubbing of the original song. And then it was the next one they played during the credits is the uh, Noah Cyrus and uh, yeah. Jonas um, remix version right. of the okay. song. Which they both were pretty good, but you could, but the original one with the English dub over it was a lot better than the remix. It was just, you know, that typical like yeah. poppy remix. And, it's like, in the Japanese audio, it. it's the Japanese version of the song. So I, I wouldn't yeah. put it past them. All right. Well, now that we've talked about our final thoughts on the movie, let's go over to social media and ask all of you what you thought of Ponyo. And we only got comments from x slash twitter so we're gonna go over there uh our first one is from this paul guy uh about how he's <laughs> honored to talk about studio ghibli and i was like all right cool uh, i guess i should be excited about it no uh but, no we were very excited to have paul on the oh, show to great. talk about this movie and just to talk about animation he is our now he is our unofficial animated animation guy so anytime we're going to talk about an animated movie we know who to call. Our next one is from Stu World Order or at SWO Productions, who said, This is the one one Ghibli I have not checked out yet. I have heard it is the most aimed at kids of Miyazaki's flicks, so I just let it go under the radar. I would say watch it. Uh, even if it's yeah. just you or you and your significant other, it's it's really a great watch. Like I try to watch it with my kids, but my kids just don't have the extension spans to sit and watch movies. <laughs> it makes me sad. Uh, our next one is from at Forgiven John three sixteen. I haven't heard from this fine gentleman in a long time. Yeah, he said, bad. but it's but it's a it's a Studio Ghibli. He I know that he's talked about them a lot over the years, um, even back before we were doing the podcast. Uh, he said so good and can't go wrong with a little Liam Neeson in it too. Uh, our next one is from at sp underscore film viewers or at sp film viewers who said one of our favorite Ghibli movies. So sweet and charming. Uh, at Candy the Final Girl. Candy Final Girl says, such an underrated Ghibli film. This is one of my daughter and I's favorite Studio Ghibli films of all time. I adore it, both subbed and dubbed. Uh, at Screen Nerds Pod uh, has an episode on it. They did it last year, so go check that out. It's in the comments for this uh, post. Uh, they're not super long episodes, so and they're, and it's a very good show, so check it out. Uh, at eBunny061, or our good friend Ebony, says, Adore this film. Okay, it said it in the thing. Okay, yeah. I'll just put Ham adore this thing. <laughs> Ham. Oh my goodness! It's Michael Howe back. It's been a while since we got a Michael Howe comment. Hey. Our friend Michael Howe or at M Howe eight nineteen eighty said many of my friends just adore this film, but I find it to be one of Miyazaki's good films compared to some of his that I love. I think one of the issues I have is after. The many layered plots of his previous films, Ponyo wants us to not think so hard. This is a, yes. a little difficult for me and that I can't help but think that tens, possibly hundreds or thousands of people have died due to what Ponyo has unleashed. <laughs> Let alone her mother seems willing to bet the fate of the world on Sosuke. No pressure, kid. <laughs> Thanks for the comment, Michael. It, it's always good to hear from you. And our last one is from Desert of the Real Podcast or at Desert of Real Pod. It says, when it, come, when it first came out, I thought it was less than other Ghibli films. How wrong and dumb I was. It's incredible. So a lot of positive uh, comments about this movie. I wasn't expecting kind of anything less. So thank you to everyone who left us a comment. Make sure to follow us at Dissect That Film on all the social medias where we post uh, what movie we're going to be covering. Make sure to go over there and share your thoughts if you've seen the movie and uh, so we can read them on the show because we really do love reading your comments. Paul, Paul. it was an absolute pleasure having you on once again. This won't be the this won't be the last time, of course, but we always thoughts. appreciate 
you coming on. You said you have thoughts. Uh, Oh, yes. We'll talk about it after the recording. You have thoughts about Paul? All the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Like movie ID. Those kind of thoughts. Those kind of thoughts. Okay, okay. I thought it was not like, you know, it's going to like just escort him out the door and then burn his phone number or something. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's a pleasure, though. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you it dangle the animation carrot in front of me, it's not going to be hard for me to bite. And look at who yep. picked it yeah, first. As soon as Dustin messaged me, he's like, uh, Parker and then wants you to do Ponyo. I said, tell him yes. I said, tell him yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a no-brainer. <laughs> there will be more. As s- me. No we'll joke. More. As soon as it's because like we, you know, Every month we've been each picking our own movies and then we kind of each pick a movie for our Patreon polls. And as soon as Angela picked Ponyo, I was like, oh, I'm going to reach out to Paul. <laughs> and actually, I think it was during our live stream because we picked them during our live stream and and Dustin was there. So he was like, all right, I'll reach out to Paul for you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. That took perfect. I, I kind of had I kind of had you in mind. Two seconds for me to say yes to that. Out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got. Uh, a lot of fun things going on over at Flicks and Friends. I know you just, uh, well, it'll be a while uh, from when we release this. You guys are currently going to be on a break when this yeah. comes out. We are on a break. But your last. Yeah. <laughs> we were on a break. God, I love it. Uh, but you released your last episode before you went on your break was Who Framed Great. Roger Rabbit. And it was fantastic because that movie is. Masterpiece. Uh, pretty much perfect yes it is it is a masterpiece and uh you guys will be celebrating your 100th episode when you come back yep. from your break i think i remember yeah. oh i know what i know what your 100th episode is uh but also i'm going to be coming back on your show for the uh, come August, to talk about indiana jones and the temple of doom for my yep. 101st episode. so uh, listen you guys ain't talking about Indiana Jones on anybody's other show until you talk about it with me, because I want Dan's first experience with Indiana Jones to be on our show. Uh, uh, so you've never seen it either? Yes. Oh, my God. No. Have well, you not s- all of it. Have like, you seen, seen any of them, Angela? No. <gasps> See, that's why That's why I didn't I reach out to you guys, I, I, because I was like, no. We're doing no, Indiana Jones not on why. our show. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, not I don't understand <laughs> anyone from our generation has not seen Indiana Jones. I mean, when Dustin, especially Dustin, because Dustin loves adventure films, especially 80s adventure films. They're like, how have you not seen Indiana Jones? Uh, like, I, the first, the original I've trilogy. I've seen pieces. Yeah, yeah we ones. don't care about the, I mean, to be honest, I don't hate Crystal Skull as much as most people do, but I, it's definitely one I don't like I, get excited about. It's like I would just rather watch the original I trilogy and just be done Crystal with Skull. It. I didn't hate Dial of Destiny. Uh, it it was too long. It was too Absolutely long. Was That's too my long. biggest. It was, it was too long. way too long. It's two and a half. Yeah, it's just be, no, t- thank you. Um, not for a fifth exactly. Indiana Jones movie, but I digress. Um, but yeah, you guys got a lot of fun things going on over that show, and you guys do a great job. I know that Dustin's also doing like a side thing with B action. Uh, over with yep. the Give Me Back My Action and Horror Movies, which is a, another fun show. Just talk about B action movies that I no believe, one's heard I about. Believe <laughs> Smith is on with them. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mickey's over there. He uh, doing all his. I mean, he's a co-host, but he's also doing a lot yep. of voiceover work, and he does voiceover yes, work with does. <laughs> a show now, and it's fantastic. I do miss the old Paul reading the back of the box, but. Uh, that was his, is, he's really good oh, dude. Yeah. it was a spur of the Ooh. moment ask of him so too because he read that batman one for us and i was like i was like hear me out man and I, I was like you don't you can say no and he was like no absolutely i'll do it. i was like because i was like dude the guy has a, a silver voice box like the dude just yes it's glorious the who framed roger rabbit oh, one yeah. was so good so good but uh yeah you guys need to seriously go check out flicks and friends it's one of uh, our favorite podcast over here. We I, I listen to it every week. I love listening to the different opinions between because Dustin and Paul are two completely different dudes, two completely different opinions. <laughs> you have you ha, you know it, it, Paul brings all the the facts and the knowledge of the movies, and Dustin <laughs> brings Dustin, and it's great and, and his experiences. It's and it's it's I, I love it. It's one of my favorites, 
and um, we love having you guys on the show. And uh, yeah, anytime. You guys All right, I'll be back next welcome. week. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you want to you want to come uh, for next week because the movie we're going to be talking about next week, uh, the movie that won our Patreon poll for our Waterworks Month is going to be 2002's Ghost Ship. Actually, like Ghost Ship. That's a good movie. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's next week. Um. Paul, did you did you want to did you want to plug the show or did you? Uh, did, did, yeah, <laughs> I, I'll do my best. This is Dustin's forte. Um, uh, we are on all of the social medias except for Threads, I think. And then you can find us on every podcasting uh, outlet, uh, whatever is available now. I can't keep up with what's still available. Just search Flicks and Friends podcast. You'll find us. <laughs> yeah, they have a they have a link tree. Uh, Flicks and Friends podcast. You can find them on X slash Twitter at F underscore oh, F yeah. podcast or Instagram at Flicks and Friends podcast. Yeah, that one's your your X uh, handle because sometimes it's a pain in the butt to try to find the. the I always put Flicks and it's like, nope, that's not the freaking thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all of the links and everything for Flicks and Friends is or will be down in the description. As for us. You know where to find us on social media, but you can also find us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash dissect that film for as one single dollar. You can get access to Patreon polls, early access to episodes, uh, which I'm actually back on top of. So you're going to be getting episodes pretty early now, almost a week ahead. You're uh, you have uh, blooper reels. There's going to be a 20 minute freaking pre-show for <laughs> Ponyo that'll be on Patreon yeah. uh, the week that this will be releasing, which will, um, you know, whatever it's already out when you're listening to this now. And, uh, also our free members. So if you join the Patreon at the free tier, you can also participate in our Patreon polls, which every month we're going to be doing a Patreon poll for our, the final movie we cover for each month. Next month will be our Patreon poll for our mummy month. We're going to be as, as you know, uh, August is our mummy month. We're going to be covering, uh, the Mummy from 1999, The Mummy Returns, The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. We're gonna be covering. We're gonna be covering everybody's favorite mummy, Mummy, the 2017 Tom Cruise Mummy, and then our final episode for that month will be whatever you guys choose on the Patreon poll between all of our picks. So make sure to go to Patreon.com/slash Dissect That Film, join even at the free tier so you can participate in those polls. But also you can join at the Please. five dollar tier. To get access to our Patreon exclusive show called The Monster Zone, where once a month we spin a wheel, we land on a monster movie, and we talk about it. And for July, it is <laughs> camera versus somebody. Barugon, right? Oh, oh, Barugon. Nice. Barugon. There it is. There it is. So, Paul, if you ever want to join us for our Monster Zone episodes, I know oh, you're I would a big love kaiju to. guy. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I, I'll let you know when our record date is, and you can, you can hop on for whatever one you want. But, uh, but yes, thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Let me go over there and thank you all. Billy Joseph Jr., Andrew Shoning, Corey Morissette, Jason, Dustin from the Flicks and Friends podcast, Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming, Doom Generation, Eric Stein, Robert Stewart, Rudy5453, Dennis, Charles, Bucket of Chum, the Shark Movie Podcast, and official Joey C. Thank you to everybody who supports us over on patreon.com slash dissect that film. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash dissect that film, where you can watch the video versions of our podcast. Hello. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, make sure to leave us five stars on your favorite podcast app. It really helps us out. At least uh, makes us... Uh, our morale go up. I don't know how well it does for the show, but people say it works. It helps the show. Some people say maybe not so much. I don't know, but Hey, we like those five-star ratings. So make sure to leave us that five-star rating. Hey, and you can even email us at dissect that film at gmail.com. Email us your five-star ratings so that we can shout you out on social media because that's cool. And we really appreciate you. I think I'm done talking. I want to be done talking because I hate this part of the show. <laughs> I don't hate thanking all of the wonderful people who support us, support us and all the wonderful listeners out there who listen to our show and do all the fun things that help us out. We appreciate you and we love doing what we're doing. So thank you very much. But 
Until next time, I am Brett Parker. That is Dan Angel of DNA Gaming. And that is Paul from the Flicks and Friends podcast. This has been another episode of the Dissect That Film podcast. See y'all again next time. Bye. Bye.